From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Mr. Beast Burger in the UK and the US. This is Food Wars. In the US, a Mr. Beast Beast Style Burger comes in double and triple. The Beast Style Burger in the UK also comes in two sizes, the double and the triple. It's dripping grease, holy sh... <laughs> Can you see how wet this is? Let's weigh a triple burger now to see whose burger is bigger. Look how gross these scales are, by the way. A beast style triple in the UK weighs 270 grams. The US triple beast style burger weighs 290 grams. In the US, Mr. Beast Burger has one size of crinkle cut fries. They come in either unseasoned or seasoned. In the UK, we also just have one size of fries and they come as either seasoned or as unseasoned. Speaking of fries, the menu offers a Chris style burger. Who's Chris? His burger has fries on it. And for this, they charge you an extra dollar, or in the UK, an extra British pound. This got me wondering, how many fries come on this burger, and does that warrant an extra dollar charge? Let's count and find out. One, two, three. That seems reasonably generous. 27 fries on my Cristal burger. But what about the cost of the fries? Let's count how many fries come in an order. One, two, three. I'm doing that one. 92. Let's go by volume. For an extra dollar, you get 33 grams of fries. An order of fries total is 133 grams. How do we figure that out? You're paying four pence three per chip. We had 33 then grams equal a dollar for the crystal, right? Grams. How much was it? One pound 17 worth of chips in the burger. I think technically you're paying like an extra pound for this one compared to the Beast Burger. So you're actually, are, you are getting slightly more than you pay for. <laughs> By 17p. <laughs> so if our math is correct, it looks like on the Chris style burger, per gram, each fry costs three cents. But if you get the crinkle cut fries on the side, each fry per gram costs four cents. So you're actually getting a better deal on fries if you get them in the Chris Burger than separately. That's pretty nice. That took way longer than it should have, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Here is everything you'll find at a Mr. Beast Burger in the UK. Here's everything you can find in the US at a Mr. Beast Burger. There's a slight problem with our usual exclusives approach to this section, which is namely that the UK doesn't have any. Everything on the menu here is also available in the US. However, I do have a suspicion that some of these things might be slightly different, so we're gonna take a look. The only food exclusive the US has over the UK is in the US, you can get a Mr. Beast Impossible Burger made with the Impossible Beef. That's because at the time of recording this, Impossible Beef is not available in the UK. That's because it contains a key ingredient called soy lehemoglobin, aka heme. According to Impossible Foods, it's what makes some meats taste so meaty and creates the bleeding effect. Heme is classified as GRAS, generally recognized as safe in the US. However, it does not have regulatory approval in the UK or the EU just yet, although Impossible Foods do say they're working on it. Besides that, the only drink in the US, can't get in the UK, is Ceramist. UK, consider yourself lucky. Sierra Miss sucks. Start down this end with the classic. So we have the Mr. Beast style double, two smash patties, there's cheese, and then there's also pickles, chopped onions, some mustard, and some ketchup. I love smash burgers, and I wish more places did smash burgers. You end up with these incredibly like crispy bits on the outside. You see this? That's just like pure flavor. Mm. It's like beef candy, it's brilliant. That's really good. That's pretty good. I do like this. I don't know if I would consider this a smash patty though. Tasty, juicy. Then of course we have the beef style triple, which has the same toppings, but an extra beef patty. The Chris style. What up Chris? Whoever you are, fries and bacon on the sandwich. Yeah, so this is just okay. So this is the UK Chris style burger. We have bun, we have fries, with some cheese, two beef patties, and then on the bottom, just one piece of bacon, and it's kind of that like cheap bacon. I associate this with uh, buffets, particularly when you go to an all-inclusive resort in Central Europe. I have to try this one, it looks so good. Mm -hmm. 
They didn't skimp on the fries. This thing is dense. So this is the Carl's Deluxe in the UK. What they've done is for some reason only flipped one of the burger buns and then they've kind of used that to create a grilled cheese effect, which in the UK we call a cheese toasty. But then within that you have a beef patty with cheese on both sides as well as some grilled onions. The Chandler style, there's nothing on this, just burgers and cheese. Like this food is made for like 10 year olds. Chandler, come on, man. What's going on? This is a very, very basic cheeseburger. It's just bun, cheese, meat, cheese, meat, bun. It just feels a little bit like when you're a little kid and all you want is a hamburger with bread and beef. It's too dry. Come on, Chandler, live a little, man. Get some sauce involved, maybe even some pickles, who knows. I don't know what the Nashville tastes like over there in the UK. Sticking tenders in here, but this one, it's crunchy. And of course, they also have the option of just like a regular chicken sandwich. In a weird way, it kind of reminds me of the McChicken, but like not as flavored. Any fast food place, this would be like the dollar menu chicken sandwich. This is $9? Bro. No, 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 no. This is the Nashville. This is, this is, this is so offensive to the people of Nashville. <laughs> people of Nashville, uh, look away now because the UK is about to start another revolutionary war. So the problem is, uh, in the UK, no one really knows what Nashville hot chicken is supposed to look like. So fast food chains can get away with serving things like this and people don't know enough to call them out on it. And what is this? Come on. What they've done, as far as I can tell, is just take standard chicken tenders and then I think they've added maybe some of the seasoning from the seasoned fries and then tried to pass that off as a hot chicken sandwich. I'm not good with spice. There's nothing going on there. Zero Scovilles. That's not Nashville, nor is it hot. You can also just get a chicken tender sandwich. I don't understand what the difference is particularly. This one has pickles on it. I just wish we could up our chicken game in the UK. At the moment, we're not doing the best job of it. And unfortunately, Mr. Beast Burger is not our hero when it comes to that. So Carl, making his second appearance on the menu, apparently has a grilled cheese that is two top buns flipped over, but cheese smashed in the middle of it. This six bucks? Oh, that's... Th that's really funny. How much is a loaf of bread and a bunch of slices of American cheese? You can make like 20 of these. This thing looks quite sad. I think both of the buns are supposed to be flipped. Quite an interesting aesthetic. The cheese hasn't really melted properly, so it's not stuck to this. <laughs> so it's just a very smooth, shiny layer of cheese. These are your seasoned fries. No, no, no. It does give me like a slight Nando's vibe to it in terms of the heat level and some of the flavor profiles as well. Like almost like a peri-peri seasoning on this. Mr. Beast Burger also offers something called beast style fries, which comes loaded with caramelized onions, American cheese, pickles, mayo, ketchup, and mustard. This is it right here. I don't know about this, guys. <laughs> Maybe not the most visually appealing. <laughs> However, I like the idea of uh, fries and pickles together. Cheers. I really like these. These are really good. And one dessert. A chocolate chip cookie. That's a pretty good cookie. That's not bad. This is like pretty stale. Obviously we're a bit lacking in exclusives in the UK, but maybe I can take some pre-existing menu items and combine them to create a Harry style burger. Trademark Harry style the Chandler style, which was the very plain one. I'm gonna take some of the uh, fake Nashville hot chicken, which is not very hot at all. Lamb that straight on top. Actually, yeah, I think this will benefit from some of the moisture on this bun, so I'm gonna keep that as well. So we're going for Mr. Beast style fries, because I quite liked the Chris style with the fries on it. Here goes, the Harry styles. You know what? We might have done something there. I actually don't mind the combination of chicken and beef. I think that kind of works. Oh God, what have I done? They were too preoccupied with whether or not they could. They didn't stop to think about whether or not they should. But honestly, don't hate it. Give it a try. So for my signature burger, here's what I'm gonna do. I think this is a really good idea. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna take a Carl's grilled cheese and a second Carl's grilled cheese. And mine's gonna be the beast style burger, but instead of buns, it's two grilled cheeses. Check this out. Grilled cheese, double patties, should I put the fries on it too? Yeah. Why not? We'll make it a Chris style because these fries have all the seasoning and stuff on it. They have all the ketchup and have all the sauces and everything on it. Oh, and there's caramelized onions too. Okay, there. They got the Beast Burger, or the Beast Style Burger. 
This is the Joe style burger. We can also call this, I've been told they look like old Mr. Beast. So this could be old Mr. Beast style burger or Mr. Beast with no serotonin burger or I kind of look like that guy from Game of Thrones burger. So whatever you want to call it, but here we go. Oh man, this, I'm like excited about this. Look how good this looks. I'm an absolute genius. This is so good. Mmm. Oh man. Jimmy, put this on the menu. Put this on the menu. One more. Like I, like I really want to keep eating this. I right, one more bite, I'm sorry. Here's a US beef style double burger combo. Over here, it will run you $15.29. That same combo in the UK is 14 pounds 99. 15 quid for that? Yes. Holy We aren't having none of it. <laughs> but what about the delivery fees? Using the Mr. Beast Burger site in the US, the same combo with tax, delivery fees, and tip costs $28.72, increasing the cost by 87.8%. Oof. So if possible, you may want to go pick up your food. It's a similar deal here in the UK. We checked this order on Deliveroo and they charge a £2.49 delivery fee and a £2.05 service charge, which jacks the price up by almost a third. One big difference worth pointing out is the tipping culture in the UK and the US. It's much less common to tip in the UK than it is in America. In the UK, if you go to a restaurant for some food, it's usually common to give maybe a 10% or a 12.5% service charge if the service has been good, but you can even opt out of that if you don't want to pay it. Particularly where delivery is concerned, I think tipping is even less common in the UK. I got a notification actually on my delivery app the other day to say that 6% of people in my area have been tipping their drivers recently. So that's six out of every 100 people are tipping a delivery driver. When I say that we don't have as much of a tipping culture in in the UK, it's not that we're really stingy. We just generally have a much higher minimum wage in the UK than you do in the US, so there's less reliance on tips to make ends meet for service industry stuff. We thought we'd take a look back over the story of Mr. Beast Burger to give you all some context. It all started with a YouTube video back in 2020 in which Mr. Beast opened a single drive through restaurant where the food is free and customers would even get free money for visiting. Obviously, thousands of people showed up and the video got over 100 million views. At the end of the video, Mr. Beast announced Mr. Beast Burger, his chain of burgers, which was available across the US for delivery. He partnered with Virtual Dining Concepts, a platform which matches brands with existing restaurants and kitchens to prepare and deliver food. By using existing kitchens, Mr. Beast Burger was able to expand rapidly, opening 300 locations in the US in the first week, followed by more in the UK and Canada shortly after. For context, it took McDonald's six years to open 300 US locations. You can start to see why brands love virtual kitchens. At the time of filming this, there is only one brick and mortar Mr. Beast Burger location, recently opened in New Jersey's American Dream Mall. At the grand opening, over 100,000 fans showed up, some waiting in line all night. It was a massive success, captured by Colin and Samir, who documented the entire day. According to the doc, at the grand opening, Mr. Beast Burger sold 6,212 burgers, and broke the world record by three times. Guinness World Records has asked for proof and at the time of this recording has not made it official. But it hasn't all been sunshine and roses. Pretty much anybody can apply to become a virtual kitchen for Mr. Beast Burger. There's a form on the Virtual Dining Concepts website where you can tell them which facilities you have in the kitchen. So if you have a fryer, a flat top and a fridge, and you normally make fried food, even if you just have a single location, you can cook Mr. Beast Burger. That's all it takes. A fryer, a flat top and a fridge. I mean, you can buy a deep fryer for pretty cheap. And I feel like you could install a flat top on like pretty much any kitchen and everyone's got a fridge. So I feel like I could probably cook Mr. Beast Burger if I wanted to. A wide variety of restaurants acting as virtual kitchens has led to a slew of quality control issues for the chain. The food is coming from all types of restaurants independent of each other. So what you're getting may be a bit of a crapshoot. So we went ahead and got Mr. Beast Burger from a second location. First, the Chandler style. Mm. And I have to say, it looks pretty good, right? Very impressed. The Chandler style from restaurant number two. Okay, the first thing I noticed is the burger's not wrapped. <laughs> is that okay? It's bigger, but I mean that clearly different bun. This is more of a smash patty. How it's like really like almost like paper thin. Where this just looks like tiny burgers. Chandler burger, right? Eh? Mm. The cheese makes this one. No. It's like a different quality of meat too. I think that this actually is pertinent information. This is from a restaurant in Glendale. 
This was from the Buca de Beppo's at Universal Studios. <laughs> Hot chicken sandwich. All right, again, place number one, the place we like. It's saying it's Nashville, but instead of doing chicken sandwiches, doing chicken tender sandwiches, bit of a disparity between A and B. Mm-hmm. Nothing crispy. Spicy? It's disappointing. There's no spice to that. I mean, this one. Yeah. Mmm. That, however, is much better. Despite some of these quality discrepancies, Mr. Beast Burger shows no sign of slowing down its growth. Earlier this year, Mr. Beast tweeted that the brand has already shared over $100 million of revenue with restaurants across America. When he says shared, it means that not all the money is going to Mr. Beast, nor is all the money going to the restaurants. The restaurants will obviously take a large cut, but then some of the money will go to virtual dining concepts, and I'm sure some of it is going to Mr. Beast as well. For example, one restaurant in Dallas, Texas claimed it sold $7,000 worth of Mr. Beast Burgers in a single day. Mr. Beast actually once described the launch of Mr. Beast Burger as a gamble, but so far it's looking like that gamble paid off. We actually collected today's order in store, and I had to kind of place the order there by showing the guy my phone, and he kind of tapped it all through for me. He was actually kind of surprised at how much the burgers cost. He said they looked quite expensive. I guess it just means that he wasn't aware of how many fees are being added on, so that either the delivery platform or virtual dining concepts can get a fair cut of the profit. It seems like the nutritional stats for Mr. Beast Burger are actually the same in the US and the UK. A beast style with double patties is 950 calories, 66 grams of fat, 23 grams of saturated fat, 43 grams of carbs, 41 grams of protein, and 1,840 milligrams of sodium. Note, that is 80% of your daily sodium. Make it a beast style triple and the calories go up to 1,160, which is over half of your daily allowance. What you really have to look out for here is the saturated fat. A B-Style Triple contains 150% of your daily recommended intake. Bump it up to a B-Style Double Burger combo with unseasoned fries and a can of Sierra Mist gives you a grand total of 1,330 calories. Bump it up to a triple, mm, and you hit 1,540 calories. Comparing the B-Style Burger to other fast food chain burgers, Mr. Beast calorie-wise lands about here pretty high up there. But good news for Jimmy, no one in America cares. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Red Bull in the UK and the US. This is Food Wars. In the UK, Red Bull comes in three portion sizes. A 250 milliliter can, a 355 milliliter can, and a 473 milliliter can. In the US, our Red Bull cans come in four sizes. 8.4 fluid ounces or 250 milliliters, 12 fluid ounces or 355 milliliters, 16 fluid ounces or 473 milliliters, and the biggest one, 20 fluid ounces, yo, or 591 milliliters. That means our US largest size is 30% bigger than the UK's. Let's see if we're actually getting our uh, 473 milliliters worth. Actually looks slightly more than 473. Maybe we're getting even more for our money. The largest single item by volume in the UK is a 24 pack of our 355 milliliter cans. That totals 8,520 milliliters, which is around 288 fluid ounces. While we do have a larger can on offer, that only comes as part of a 12 pack, meaning that the total is only 5,664 milliliters, which is less than the 24 pack of this one. In the US, our largest Red Bull item is a 24 pack of 12 fluid ounce cans. I wasn't able to get my hands on it, but it's the same liquid amount as the UK's largest. Our closest second is a 12 pack of 24 fluid ounce cans. Here are all the Red Bull products you'll find in the UK, some of which you won't find in the US. Here are all the Red Bull items in the US you won't find in the UK. So technically we have eight Red Bull products in the UK. We have the normal one, we have the sugar-free one, we have the zero one, red, green, yellow, orange, and white. Some of these are seasonal and will rotate in and out, so it's a little bit tricky to keep track of exactly what's on offer, but this is what we could get today. In addition to this, we have a couple of sugar-free exclusives, which technically adds to the total. From what I can tell, these three flavors are exclusive to the US and you can't find them in the UK. First, we have the blue edition, which is blueberry flavored. And we got the peach flavored, which I believe is flavored peach. And the winter edition, which is what flavored? Fig apple, hmm. Now both countries have the coconut flavor, but from what I can tell online, we also have the coconut sugar free flavor. I actually couldn't even find sugar-free versions of the red one or the orange one. I did find a sugar-free yellow one though. You can tell it's sugar-free because it's got this blue sugar-free band there, blue sugar-free label there, and also, the tab is blue. 
That's quite fun. While it's not technically a UK exclusive, I did find this one while I was hunting for Red Bull. I think it's imported from Thailand and it's a cold brew coffee flavored Red Bull, which sounds pretty intense. Because there aren't too many exclusives between the US and the UK, I'm gonna do a lightning round of every flavor I can get my hands on here in the US. Couldn't find any of the sugar-free option, but I know they are available, at least online. And also I got Red Bull Zero and sugar-free Red Bull. So let's do a quick lightning round of each flavor. Ready? The issue here is that I don't drink energy drinks. I don't like the taste of Red Bull. They make me feel weird. I drink tea if I need a bit of a caffeine hit and that's it. But apparently uh, I have to taste test all of these. So wish me luck. I am not happy about this. Regular Red Bull flavors, but uh, sugar-free. I don't think I've ever had a sugar-free one. Maybe I should, because I did drink an alarming amount of Red Bull when I was younger. And maybe a sugar-free option would have been a good idea. You know, well, side-by-side -side action, regular, sugar-free. I might start getting the sugar-free ones. It's like really close. Good job on that, Red Bull. Basically, the only time I drink Red Bull is when it's in a Jaeger bomb. It's also makes me think of those, uh, which is not the vibe for a uh, 11 a.m. video shoot. Cheers, I guess. So this is the normal Red Bull. Yeah. The best thing I can say about this is that the taste kind of like disappears fairly fast. So I'll uh, leave that in the middle to begin with while I do the rankings. This is the sugar-free version in the giant can. The aftertaste isn't quite as nice with the sugar-free version. Slightly worse than the regular one. Sugar-free has some sugar in it, I guess. It says zero grams of sugar on sugar-free, but for some reason, they got another one that's zero sugar. Okay. Doesn't have much of a taste either, to be honest. You get that kind of like that like energy drink, like jolt you get when you take a sip of an energy drink. The Red Bull Zero oddly doesn't have that. Okay, the coconut edition. Coconut berry, Red Bull. I don't, I've never seen a human being drink any of these. Never in my life have I seen anyone purchase one of these or drink them. Up until me making this video, I did not know these existed. And I don't know why they exist still. Let's find out. All right, coconut and berry Red Bull. The product nobody asked for. This coconut berry Red Bull is absolutely terrible. That is absolutely ter That is what it's like to drink uh, sunscreen. Red one, watermelon. I actually don't hate that. That's not bad. My issue is I don't understand why they settled on that as the taste of like unsweetened, unflavored Red Bull because it's not good, <laughs> at least in my opinion. Watermelon has helped that out. The green edition, the dragon fruit, as you are aware, dragons are green, so clearly the can is green, dragon fruit. Ever wanna make that connection? Oh my God. It's somehow worse than this one. It's somehow worse. This is what I think pee tastes like. Does that make sense? It smells like pee. The energy that Red Bull gives you is being counteracted by the absolute depression these flavors are giving me right now. I'm like having this weird thing of like all this energy and it's being converted into sadness because of these two. Next up is the green one, which is flavored with cactus fruit. I don't know what cactus fruit is meant to taste like. If I saw a green can, I would assume maybe green apple or lime. It's fine, I don't think it's quite as good as the uh, watermelon. Ah, <sighs> watermelon, Red Bull. Ugh, I don't want to do this anymore. We're making a comeback. Watermelon's not bad. Watermelon's not bad. Oh yeah, baby, the Red Bull meter is going up. Sugar-free tropical fruits. I generally quite like tropical fruits flavored things because I have a palate of a child. 
I spoke too soon, that's really gross. <laughs> no, bad. Worst one so far. Worse than the sugar-free normal one. All right, blue edition, blueberry. Yeah, not bad, tart. Wow, tart. 38 grams of sugar in this. You would not think, you would not believe that from the way this tastes. I guess I'm not complaining, it's just, do you want your energy drink to be tart? Regular tropical fruits. One thing I'm already noticing is that the sugar-free versions have much less of a strong smell compared to the versions with sugar. It's better than the sugar-free version. It's still not great. <laughs> Try that one more time. The regular tropical version is actually better than unflavored Red Bull, whereas the sugar-free one, something's gone wrong there because that is actually worse than the classic Red Bull. All right, peach edition, peach nectarine. Yeah, there we go. Mm. Yeah, wow. Ooh, that's good. That's really good. Also tart. 38 grams of sugar. The summer edition, apricot strawberry. I mean, that sounds lovely. This maybe sounds like the most appealing of any of them so far. So I've got high hopes. It smells pretty good. I get, I get notes of strawberry. Ooh. Ooh, okay. See, this is concerning uh, because I didn't actually want to like any of these. This is a problem, guys. I can't become a Red Bull guy. I'm not ready for a Red Bull era. I'm too loyal to Mercedes. This is pretty good. <laughs> I definitely like, I get apricot and strawberry from that. It's not overpowering. It's just like a sort of nice sparkling flavor. That's, yeah, that's the best one I've tried so far. Uh, winter edition, fig apple. Fig apple, winter, I'm not making the connection. Um. Not good, it tastes like um, if um, a sour apple Jolly Rancher was a drink. Does that make sense? No, not refreshing at all. The coconut and berry edition. I'm not getting much, if any, of the berry flavor from this. Coconut's definitely the, uh, the star of the show, but it's not bad. Coming from someone who, like I say, doesn't usually like coconut as a flavoring, I think it's actually, Better than the tropical, as far as I'm concerned. And last on the flavor train, we got the yellow edition, tropical. Ooh, tropical. Oh, it doesn't smell very good. Just please be, at least don't that. Oh, I can, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's all right, okay. And then last, but by no means least, we have this random imported coffee one that I found. My only concern or I guess comment on this one is that I'm not sure who the target audience is because I feel like if you like coffee, you'll just drink coffee if you want a caffeine hit. I'm not sure why if you liked coffee, you would want to flavor your Red Bull with coffee because you're already getting the caffeine, but here you're just getting like loads of sugar and additives as well. It tastes like someone has taken a coffee and poured Coca-Cola in it, <laughs> which might be to your liking. It's the spot, the I want to jack my caffeine levels to the roof spot. I actually, where would that go? Is that better than regular Red Bull? I actually don't think it is. But is it the worst one I've had today? No, no it's not. That's there. That's there. And we're done. My vision is starting to blur. Ooh, uh, this, might, <laughs> this might have been a bad idea. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> it's kicking in. Uh, I like Red Bull. Sugar free is exactly the same thing. This one had less of an aftertaste, which actually I didn't really like. Coconut and dragon fruit, uh, suntan lotion and pea. Uh, watermelon I liked. Blue, a little too tart. Peach, I enjoyed. Fig apple, trash and uh, tropical, not bad. My main takeaways from that, uh, firstly, I need to lie down. If we can make that happen, that would be great. Secondly, I think the sugar-free versions are overwhelmingly like worse tasting than the sugar versions are. I also think for me, like I say, I don't love the taste of just normal Red Bull. So I think I've ended up liking the ones which are flavored with things which aren't Red Bull. So that makes sense. 
What about the price? Well, in the UK, a 250 milliliter can will cost you £1.50 at a Tesco supermarket. That works out to roughly 60 pence per 100 milliliters, which is around 74 cents. In the US, the cost of this 250 milliliter Red Bull can at Walmart is $2.18, which breaks it down to 80 cents per 100 milliliters. So it looks like the UK is actually getting a slightly better deal on its Red Bull than the US is. That's actually kind of a food wars first, but it doesn't happen often. In the UK, our standard Red Bull contains the following ingredients. Water, sucrose, glucose, acidifier citric acid, taurine, sodium carbonates and magnesium carbonate, caffeine, niacin, pantothenic acid, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, flavorings, colors, caramel and riboflavin, and carbon dioxide. Our Red Bull in the US contains pretty much the same stuff. Carbonated water, sucrose, glucose, citric acid, taurine, sodium bicarbonate, magnesium carbonate, caffeine, niacinamide, <coughs> calcium panthenate, <coughs> Pyroxenine HCI, <laughs> vitamin B12, natural and artificial flavors. All right, the vitamins have different names, but it's all the same. You may notice the ingredient taurine on that list. Now, taurine has been the subject of inaccurate rumors on the internet for years. Taurine has an association with bulls, drawing its name from the Latin word for bull, taurus. Some people ran with this and falsely claim that it's code for bull semen. The name actually comes from the fact that taurine was first isolated from ox bile. Okay. The good news is that there's no ox spit in Red Bull as food producers have used a synthetic version of taurine that isn't derived from animals. It also means that Red Bull is suitable for vegans. One study found that exposing human teeth to energy drinks for 15 minutes four times a day resulted in a significant and irreversible loss of tooth enamel. The study also noted that energy drinks were twice as harmful as regular soft drinks to tooth enamel. As a study in rats found, chronic intake of Red Bull may cause a decline in kidney function. However, these results have not been replicated in human studies. But, an excuse to see my boys the dancing rats, Red Bull in the UK contains 110 calories per 250 milliliter can. One of these cans also contains 27 grams of sugar. According to their website, this is actually a similar amount of sugar to what you might find in, say, apple juice. Both sugar-free Red Bull and Red Bull Zero contain 10 calories per this 8.4 fluid ounce can. Sugar-free flea, sugar -free replace their sugar with acetylflame potassium and aspartame. Red Bull Zero replace sugar with acetylfame potassium K and sucralose. Acetylfame potassium, or ACE K, which is Red Bull's zero calorie sweetener, has had its share of controversy over the years. Although to be fair, a lot of the studies this came from were done in the 1970s. This has led to their validity being called into question in recent years. According to healthline.com, in 1996, the Center for Science in the Public Interest urged the FDA to do more testing on ACE K before allowing its inclusion in soft drinks. The CSPI go on to say that there are health concerns associated with ASK, including cancer, hormone disruption, and risks to pregnant people. There's also a study that determined the chronic use of ASK in male mice was linked to possible changes in brain function over a period of 40 weeks. Yeah, I believe it. It's been 40 minutes and my brain is just... One of the perceived benefits of drinking Red Bull is that it's supposed to give people a boost through its caffeine content. A 250 milliliter can contains 80 milligrams of caffeine, but is that a lot? Compared to other soft drinks, yeah. A 12 ounce can of Coke contains 34 milligrams of caffeine. That's less than half the amount of caffeine and almost double the amount of fluid as this Red Bull. A 12 ounce can of Mountain Dew contains slightly more with 55 milligrams. If we compare Red Bull to another popular energy drink, Monster you'll find that they actually have the same caffeine content per 100 milliliters, which is 32 milligrams. Although monster cans tend to be bigger, so you are getting more caffeine in total. The caffeine amount, however, can be a bit underwhelming when compared to regular coffee. An eight ounce, 237 milligram, brewed coffee contains on average 95 milligrams of caffeine. And a double shot of espresso contains 125 milligrams. One issue comes from the fact that some people will consider Red Bull to be more like a soda and therefore might drink higher quantities of it. So is it possible to overdose on Red Bull? Uh, yeah, although highly unlikely. Caffeine-related deaths have been found in individuals that intake somewhere between three and five grams, not milligrams, grams of caffeine in one day. That would be 40 of these. I feel like your bladder would explode first. Although apparently that wasn't enough caffeine for some people. In 2014, Red Bull was sued in a class action lawsuit around false advertising. Remember the ad campaign, Red Bull gives you wings? Well, it doesn't. 
false advertising. Back then, Red Bull did say in its marketing that this drink could improve concentration and reaction speeds, a claim that lacked any scientific support. Furthermore, the suit said that Red Bull persistently and pervasively market their product as a superior source of energy worthy of a premium price over a cup of coffee or other sources of caffeine. Red Bull did agree to a $13 million settlement, which granted anyone who purchased a Red Bull dating back to January 1st, 2002, was entitled to $10 or $15 worth of Red Bull. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between movie theatre food at AMC and Odeon movie theatres in the UK and the US. This is Food Wars. It might seem like Odeon and AMC are different chains, however, they're actually owned by the same company. So let's compare. Popcorn at a UK Odeon cinema comes in four sizes. There's a kids, regular, medium, and large. Classic popcorn at a US AMC comes in three sizes, small, regular, large. And of course, if you want to get a to-go option, they have the AMC Mega Bag. Boom! That's three times the size of the standard large. Let's weigh a large salted popcorn in both countries to see whose large is bigger. So our large salt popcorn has actually, I think, come to 204 grams, which is about 30 grams more than we were supposed to get. 194 grams of popcorn. Avatar, haven't seen it. And for my own morbid curiosity, so I'm gonna weigh it in the bag. I don't know, just subtract like two grams. How much could the bag weigh? This? Yeah. Like that? 620 grams. Drinks at a US AMC theater come in three sizes. Small, 20 fluid ounces, regular, 32 fluid ounces, and the large Avatar, 44 fluid ounces. Now, shockingly, our drinks in the UK are actually just as big as the US ones for once. Cinemas, I think, are the only place in the UK where you can get a drink of this size. The thought of getting one of these from a fast food place in the UK is absolutely unheard of. Let's measure out the large in both countries to see if we're getting as much as we've been promised. Wow, it's pretty close. What was it supposed to be, 44? By my calculations, they've pretty much nailed bang on the 40 ounce line. So you're maybe not getting quite as much as you were promised. Admittedly, we did lose a little bit in transit and also a little splash just on the table there. So maybe you could round it up generously to like 41, 42, which honestly, even if it's slightly less than you're being promised, I think we can forgive them. Certainly we can't fault James Cameron for this. Certainly we can't blame the Navi of Pandora. We also have ice drinks, which are the iconic Tango Ice Blasts. We have them in three sizes, a regular, a medium and a large. Tango Ice Blasts are amazing. They have a bit of a cult following in the UK, I think, like cinema goers over here really, really love these. You can get them usually in two flavors, which are red and blue. I don't know exactly what they're supposed to taste of. It's kind of just like tangy food coloring anyway. They're not supposed to look like this, as you can probably tell. These have just been sat out under the studio lights for a while. Here's what they're supposed to look like. You can also get ice beverages at the USAMC, primarily in the form of an icy. And they come in three sizes normally, but not the AMC we went to, they only had regular. It should be a small 20 fluid ounce. The regular Avatar Way of the Water Navi colored drink here is a 32 fluid ounce. And of course, the large is a 44 fluid ounce. I think that's the exact same size as the soft drinks we just had. I would like to request, I don't know how hard this is gonna be if Yuli and the rest of the post-production team can make it look like I'm in the underwater Avatar <laughs> with like me just swimming with the Navi, right? We I'm in the movie. How hard would that be? Can you make it 3D as well? That's pretty easy, right? Can you have that done by end of day Friday? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I'm swimming around with Jake Sully. <laughs> Here is everything you'll find at a UK Odeon cinema that you won't find in an AMC. Here's everything at a US AMC you won't find at an Odeon. We'll start with the classic, which is popcorn. In the UK, it comes in two flavors, as salted or sweet. You can also ask them to mix them together for you. Salt and sweet, excellent contrast. You won't find butter popcorn anywhere on the menu in the UK. The fact that you guys are putting melted butter on popcorn, extremely weird to us, stop doing that. In the US, a popcorn obviously comes plain or salted, but we also have butter popcorn. And yes, Harry, we like to put melted butter all over our popcorn. Two things I wanna know, one, it's almost always referred to as butter flavored topping. Presumably because they can't legally call it butter, or maybe there's just other junk in there and it isn't officially butter. In America, there's just some people who are so nuts about the butter. AMC now has something, I don't know if this is to go or you get this in the theater, where they give you, no joke, this thing of butter on the side to take 
into the theater with you because there's so much butter flavored topping drama in the US. AMC was like, here, just take this and go to go do it yourself. Oh. Oh, look at that. You see that? You see that? Oh, yeah. I want you, I want you to pay attention. Now, imagine I'm eating this in the dark. Oh, I lick my butter so much. Oh, it's in my house. This is like the messiest snack in the world. I never get butter in my popcorn. This is so gross. Yeah, it doesn't actually taste that much like butter. It has like a buttery flavor to it. Yeah, it's definitely flavored butter. That's not melted butter. You can also get sweets as a topping on your popcorn in the UK. This comes in the form of Cadbury's Dairy Milk Buttons, as Smarties, Kit Kats, and Rolos. Speaking of popcorn, you can also get cheddar popcorn, which is, I don't know if this is just not your theaters, really popular in the UK at all, but it's popcorn that is tossed in like cheese dust. And also caramel corn, which is popcorn, you guessed it, encased and caramel. There's a range of hot food options at a UK Odeon cinema, including the following. Firstly, we have the iconic cinema hot dog. Now, obviously you guys have hot dogs in America. However, it's an exclusive because ours is a pork sausage, while yours, I think, is beef. That looks real sad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, hot dog, yay! That's a pretty good sized hot dog, right? Movie theater hot dogs for some reason are really good. You know what that? Movie theaters and ball games. That's where the hot dog's the absolute best. Next up, we have two pizza options at UK Odeon Cinemas. You can get a cheese pizza or a pepperoni pizza. I haven't even opened them and I'm losing my mind because this is how they've been packaged and presented to us. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> um, I'm slightly at a loss for words. I might be giving them too much credit here. I think maybe if this were fresh out of the oven, which obviously this is not, it actually might be okay. But there's a reason why pizza boxes exist, for example. Maybe look into that in future. I'm just imagining any Italian viewers watching this and just crying. You guys look at flatbread pizzas. The AMC I went to did not currently have them because I went there right when they opened, they weren't ready yet. But you can get also a four cheese, a pepperoni, or a supreme flatbed pizza. You can also get yourself curly fries. Now we're talking. Curly fries, right? Mmm. The Impossible Nuggets. Oh yes. For some reason I picked the marinara. Let's do it. Who doesn't want to eat fake deep fried meat and dip it in a red sauce in a, in a, in a pitch dark theater? Nope. Oh, wow. Those are really bad. We have pretzel bites at our AMC, but you can get them unsalted with cheese, salted with cheese, which I got, garlic parmesan with cheese, everything bagel with cheese, and cinnamon sugar with icing. They don't taste bad, but they're really chewy. You're gonna want those right out of the oven or the microwave. You can also get a Bavarian legend pretzel. The theater we went to did not have them at the time of filming this. At a UK Odeon, you can get triple dip nachos, which are tortilla chips, which come with guacamole, salsa, and I think a cheese sauce. This is how it came. What we have is just a bag of plain tortilla chips and a box labeled dips. We have the cheese sauce. We have some very vibrant guacamole, like someone blended up Shrek. We have some tomato salsa, jalapenos, I think this was onion and chive dip, maybe? I feel like I have to try and assemble these somehow. I want to do it in a way, but hopefully you guys can uh, join me along for the ride, because it could be interesting. I want to try and get some like layerage going on there, if possible. Oh god. <laughs> oh no, that's the... <laughs> okay, I thought that all came out as one brick, but there were actually two pots in there, thank god. Go on. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Okay, so, okay. Now we're gonna hit it with some salsa. Personally, I think this has gone sensationally well. This is, this is nachos right here. Some people might say, Harry, do you wanna heat these up? I'd say no, doesn't need it. Perfect the way they are. Oh man, look at the color on this. 
you order nachos when you go to the cinema? No. My mum used to like the nachos. She's not dead. I haven't been to the cinema with her in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah? They don't look terrible, right? Absolutely disgraceful. I don't know what's going on in that island of yours, but your nachos, thumbs down. I would say pretty generous with the chips. Not bad, right? These are UK level nachos right here. I don't know who is like, oh yeah, perfect. This is exactly what I think nachos are. Did they make a mistake? Am I looking at this right? They gave us a thing of marinara sauce? I'm assuming this marinara is supposed to be salsa. Can you imagine? Because you just get this and go to the theater in the dark. You get watching a movie. Oh man, man, this salsa sure isn't very chunky. Oh well. Man, I cannot wait to eat these nachos. Oh, I'm so worried about the tree of life, Avatar 2. Oh, no. Oh, like, what the hell? It's so bad, it's like oddly alluring. Does that make sense? This is terrible. I'm sorry. I'm going to do everyone a favor and throw this out. Yuck. Then we're onto the sides. We have a couple of side options in the UK that you won't find in the US. Unfortunately, one of them we couldn't find today, which are crisper fries, which are kind of like very thin slices of potato, which are fried. However, we could get our hands on these chicken strips, which are actually pretty good. Technically also included on the sides menu are the dips. So that includes basically everything that you would normally find on the nachos, including the side of jalapenos, the salsa dip, the cheese, the guacamole, and this cream cheese garlic and herb dip. We have one prepackaged popcorn option if you don't fancy the fresh stuff, which is this. Buttercust toffee popcorn. I think this is kind of more similar to what you guys might expect from like caramel corn in the US. It's basically popcorn, but with an actual coating of this kind of like sugary syrupy stuff. Now the AMC has a bunch of snack options that you won't find in the UK, starting with these known as lifestyle snacks. I'm assuming they're meant to be a little bit healthier. Starting all the way down here, you have the planters sweet and salty trail mix, grass-fed beef jerky, courtesy of Country Archer. I don't know about this, rhythm, organic, white cheddar, cauliflower bites. No thanks. Home free chocolate chip cookies. You got uh, only three grams of sugar for the smart and sweet watermelon bites. Mango sweet and tangy super snacks, dried mangoes, and uh, skinny dipped dark chocolate almonds. In addition to the popcorn, we also have some sweets and chocolates, which I will go through now. Wine gums. Do you guys have wine gums in the US? I really like these. They're a bit of an old person sweet. I still don't know exactly why they're called wine gums, because I don't think they have wine in them. On top of the gummies themselves, they will have like the name of a wine kind of stamped on, and they're different colors. The flavors change according to the color. Red one's always the best, of course. A couple of uh, Cadbury dairy milk options. We have some Cadbury caramel dairy milk nibbles, dairy milk giant buttons, galaxy minstrels. So in the UK, we have Dairy Milk, which is owned by Cadbury, and then the Mars Corporation has their own brand of milk chocolate, which is called Galaxy. And this is basically Galaxy chocolate with a hard shell on the outside. These honestly are really good. Cadbury 12 Bites. It's Cadbury Dairy Milk chocolate, and it's kind of got this weird like swirled texture on the inside. So it lends itself to being quite like a flaky and almost like melt in your mouth chocolate bar. They're pretty good. Aero Peppermint Bubbles. It's got this weird like aerated texture in the middle, which is designed basically to melt in your mouth when you eat it. Milky Bar Buttons. I loved Milky Bar as a kid. It's basically white chocolate, which I used to love when I was younger. I think as my palate has kind of evolved as I've gotten older, I don't really tolerate white chocolate like I used to, but these are great, bit of a nostalgia factor. And the last one we found today was Maltesers. I love a Malteser. I still don't fully understand what they are, to be honest. What is the middle bit? It's not honeycomb, but it's got like a crunchy, almost honeycomb texture. Now it's not a pre-packaged option, but it is a sweet option. We have pick and mix cups in the UK. Pick and mix is like a really iconic British thing, I think. It's basically this notion of you go into a sweet shop, or in this case, a cinema, and they'll have lots of different pots or tubs of individual candies. And you can go in with a scoop, scoop a few, put them in and create your own mixture of them. So if there's one particular one that you love, you can just have a cup full of that, or you can go for some variety, mix it up a little bit like we've done today. The issue is when you're layering it, you end up just going one layer of thing at a time. I haven't assembled this very well. Couldn't get everything. Just grabbed a bunch of stuff that I thought looked pretty good. Also, I think some classics here. Milk Duds, Junior Mints, the big box. Mini Snickers, hey. Skittles. My teeth are already starting to hurt. Butterfingers Unwrapped Minis. And Sour Patch Kids. And also Airhead Extremes. This, of course, just the tip of the iceberg. You can get so, so many candies at an AMC. Eh, this many. 
You can also get a Ben & Jerry's milkshake. What they do is they let you choose three scoops of ice cream of your choosing, and then pretty much just blend them together to create a milkshake. Also in the US, we have ice cream you can't get in the UK. You can get yourself a Dibs Crunch, a Hagen dazs Bar Almond, a Nestle Tohaus ice cream sandwich, and a Nestle's drumstick. The other soft drink exclusives are actually aimed more at children. We have some fruit sheets, which come either as this one, which is apple and blackcurrant, or as orange. It's just kind of like a bottle of squash, and for the Americans who might not know what squash is, uh, does cordial help at all? You get like a concentrated juice and then dilute it with water to produce basically this. The main event as far as I'm concerned when it comes to drinks are these ones, which are the alcoholic options. You can get alcohol at UK cinemas. We got a few of the things on offer today, and these include this recorder leg, strawberry and lime cider. We have a bottle of Heineken beer. We have some wine options. Got a little bottle of red here. It's really cute. It's literally just like they've taken a full-size bottle of red and just squished it and scaled it down. You can also get white wine and I think rosé wine as well. Or if you're in a celebratory mood, you get a little bottle of Prosecco. Then we have some pre-mixed cocktail options. Today we got a classic G&T and a Jack and Coke. What about the beverages? In the US, we have so, so many beverages, starting with the Coke Freestyle, the Freestyle Machine, you've seen it before. It has all of these flavors. I wasn't getting one of each. You can also get a Gold Peak unsweetened iced tea, which they did not have, a Gold Peak sweet tea, which they also did not have, a Minimaid orange juice, and Minimaid apple juice, chocolate milk, Dasani water, Smart Water, and a Costa coffee. They also didn't have that. I could really go for some coffee. I've been told that it is interesting that we can get Costa Coffee here. It is actually a British coffee chain, but it was bought by Coca-Cola in 2019 for almost four billion pounds and has now begun expanding into the US. A large salted popcorn at a UK Odeon contains the following. 863 calories, 48.37 grams of fat, of which 37.84 grams are saturated, 92.18 grams of carbs, of which 5.94 grams are sugars, and an unknown amount of sodium. Unfortunately, the website didn't have the sodium information. I did reach out via the live chat function, and the guy said they didn't know what had gone on. He was gonna look into it for me, but I did not hear back. A regular plain popcorn popped in canola oil is 550 calories, 24 grams of fat, two grams of saturated fat, 74 carbs, 1,380 milligrams of sodium. The same size popcorn, but this time cooked in coconut oil, 540 calories, 24 grams of fat, 17 grams of saturated fat, 74 grams of carbs, and 1,380 milligrams of sodium. Now, there are no stats for the butter flavor topping, which is a bit concerning, but if you add butter and salt to pretzel bites, it adds 100 calories and 12 grams of fat, 7 grams of saturated fat, 300 milligrams of sodium. Adding that same amount of butter to this large, Avatar way of the water popcorn, which is cooked in canola oil, you get 970 calories, 51 grams of fat, 10 grams of saturated fat, <laughs> popcorn in my throat, 117 carbs, of which one gram is sugars, and 2,450 milligrams of sodium. Same exact size of popcorn, but this time cooked in coconut oil and the butter topping from before. That's 960 calories, 50 grams of total fat, 35 grams of saturated fat, 117 carbs, of which one gram of that is sugars, and the sodium, 2,450 milligrams. People of the internet, canola oil has slightly more calories, but way less saturated fat. Huzzah. A large sweet popcorn in the UK contains the following. 1,790 calories, 73.08 grams of fat, of which 55 grams are saturated, 253 grams of carbs, of which 84.04 grams are sugars, and again, an unknown amount of sodium. Mmm. Gotta watch out for the caramel corn, Yulia. This caramel corn, in this size bucket, 1,620 calories, 64 grams of fat, 21 of those are saturated fat, 510 grams of carbs, and of that, 404 of those grams are sugar, and 3,190 milligrams of sodium. Now, the large cheddar corn seen here, 1,620 calories, 144 total grams of fat, 21 of those are saturated, 68 grams of carbs, and 2,470 milligrams of sodium. Yeesh. What about the most caloric thing on the UK menu? Well, that would be a large sweet popcorn 
with the topping option of Dairy Milk Giant Buttons. This combination would come to a total of 2,004 calories, 85.08 grams of fat, 62.2 grams of saturated fat, 275.8 grams of carbs, of which 106.44 grams are sugars. That is just over 100% of your daily calories, 109% of your daily fat, 311% of your daily saturates, and 212% of your daily sugar. Jeez. <laughs> so in the US, our AMC menus vary. I did find a PDF that had a bunch of stuff listed on here. I don't know how common it is at AMC's, but it is the Bavarian Legend Pretzel with the cheese cup and mustard. That pretzel and mustard and cheese total is 1,920 calories. One thing I wanted to point out is that it has 7,600 milligrams of sodium. That is 330.4% of your daily sodium intake. Hey, don't eat that pretzel. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Cinnabon in the US and the UK. This is Food Wars. In the UK, Cinnabon's classic rolls come in four portion sizes. As a single, as a two pack, as a four pack, and our largest size, a six pack. In the US, Cinnabon classic rolls come in three sizes. The single, oh my God, I want to eat this so bad. Then you got the four pack for you and let's be honest, just you. And then you can get yourself a six pack. This has some weight to it. Cinnabon in the US also offers catering sizes that you can't get in the UK. That means we can also get our classic Cinnabon rolls in a nine pack catering tray. Put that on the screen. Oh, that's 50% larger than UK's biggest pack. But is there a difference in the size of the rolls themselves? We're going to weigh a classic Cinnabon in both countries to find out. You can get Bon Bites in the UK, but unfortunately the store I went to didn't have them this morning. If you can get them, then they should come in a pack of four. In the US, you can get Bon Bites in a pack of four, 16, or the catering tray of 36. This is nine times bigger than the UK's four pack. <laughs> Four, get a life. UK Cinnabons also offer mini bonds. These come in three portion sizes, as a single, as a six pack, or a larger size, as a 15 pack. Use these as like a doorstop if they go stale. Over here, our mini bonds come in portions of one, nine, 15. And of course, we have a catering tray of 20. What about the drinks? In the UK, we can get hot drinks in two sizes, as a regular, which is 12 fluid ounces, or a large, which is 16 fluid ounces. In the US, our hot beverages come in four sizes, small, regular, large, and this big catering bag. Or does it? Because they forgot those three. The more observant among you would have noticed that the UK's large is only the regular over here. We can also get ice drinks in the UK, but they just come in the same sizes as our hot drinks, 12 and 16 ounces. The sizes change a little when you choose the ice drinks in the US. We got the small and the regular and the catering size. Again, the more observant of you would notice that there are some beverages missing from this cup. Joe must have started drinking them earlier. Nah, -uh. had a major beverage spilling mishap with a delivery here. Uh, more on that later. The final things to compare are the toppings and sauces. In the UK, you can get some additional toppings like the cream cheese and the pecans, and they just come in the one size, these little cups. In the US, we can get extra frosting as a regular side of the cream cheese frosting. I mean, a whole pint of the frosting, a side of pecans, who cares? Let's weigh the largest frosting side in each country to find the difference. I just like barely moved. <laughs> so this is eight of their frostings, soon to be seven. It's described as cream cheese ambient. <laughs> cream cheese ambient, that sounds like a, a really experimental music genre. <laughs> it's pretty cool, you, you probably wouldn't have heard of it, but yeah, no, I listen to mostly cream cheese ambient. Here are all the Cinnabon items from the UK that you won't find in the US. Here's everything in a Cinnabon menu you will not find in the UK. To start off with, we have some Bond varieties you actually won't find in the US. 
to start down here with Choco Bonds. So as far as I can tell, Choco Bonds are pretty much just their standard rolls, maybe with like a little bit of chocolate powder sprinkled into the mix, but then also they are covered in chocolate sauce. Cheers. Our next exclusive roll is a Lotus Biscoff Bond. Longtime viewers of the show will know that I don't really like Lotus Biscoff. I didn't realize how passionately the crew felt about Lotus Biscoff because I'm now taking heat for this. Um, apparently it's because I don't like coffee and they're really good with coffee. I just drink tea, so maybe it's wasted on me. Again, look, you do you, it's fine. Just not for me, too sweet for me. And then finally, because we're actually shooting this on Valentine's Day, we can get a limited edition Valentine's Bon. All of our exclusive bonds can also be purchased in all three forms, which is the regular size, the bond bites, and the mini bonds. We actually don't have any exclusive bonds in the US. We can only get the classic and caramel pecan bonds, both of which are obviously available in the UK. But we do have some other exclusives to showcase. The first one, the churro swirls. They forgot them! But here's what they look like, and I would love to have tried them. Now we don't have churro swirls, but we do have something called sinner chips, which are like small crunchy pieces of cinnamon roll. I'm not sure if crunchy is what I want from my cinnamon roll. They are crunchy, they won't kill them. And these aren't doing it for me. They're really kind of dry and a little bit burned almost. So you kind of get that like acrid burn taste, which cancels out pretty much any benefits that you get from the cinnamon sugar. We also have something called Center of the Roll, which Cinnabut has trademarked in the US. Now here's what I'm assuming this is by looking at it. What it looks like they just took Cinnabuns and like mashed them up or like unraveled them and put them in a cup. And this is smart because the only thing I think keeping everyone from getting a Cinnabun at the mall is it's kind of a pain in the butt to eat. And I think Cinnabun noticed this and they responded with this. Like, you're right, we'll just, we'll just Rip it up, put it in a cup, and have at it. This works. Man, I don't want to mess with the classics. If you want to sit on and have a Cinnabon at the food court, go for it, but if you're on the move, just get one of these. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Are you kidding, are you kidding me with this? This is so great. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. I'm, oh, I forgot. I'm, I'm shooting a video right now. This is the, uh, that was the regular and this is the caramel pecan bun. We have a near equivalent here, but we call it roll on the go. As far as I can tell, it's pretty much just the same thing. It's a small cup of, I think just the center pieces of cinnamon rolls. Ours come in two flavors, classic or choco. I do think my favorite part of a cinnamon roll is the gooey middle bit. Let's see if this holds up. This is pretty good. Decent amount of um, frosting. They could maybe have given you slightly more frosting because I think there's some like drier bites in the middle, but I'm pretty good. In the US, we also have cookie bond bites. Uh, these are chocolate chip cookies with cinnamon rolls inside of them. I'm just finding this out right now. Chocolate chip cookies with cinnamon rolls inside of them. Yo, straight up when I saw this, I'm like, who's getting cookies at Cinnabon? This has, a, this cannot have a cinnamon roll inside. Oh my God, you see it? Actually, what? I didn't even know this existed. Are you, you got that? You got that? Yeah. Yo, look at that. Oh, look, look at look what's inside of it. Oh my God, that's crazy. The other thing was, was this cookie's pregnant with a Cinnabon. Now it's gonna. Eh, better an idea than execution. We also have Cinna Sweeties, which look like mini donuts that I'm assuming are Cinna. Oh wait. I think this has a frosting inside. We've done these for Taco Bell. The Cinnabon Delights, and I'm pretty sure this is filled with some sort of like cream cheese, right? Wait a second. There's no... There's no cream cheese in these. The blanks. The UK Cinnabon website also advertises that some of their branches will have Carvel brand ice cream as an option, but unfortunately we didn't have that at the one we went to. Now we're on to the sauces and toppings. In the US, we have a side of Oreo pieces, you can get on top of your bun. There it is. We also have the eight ounces of frosting. And we also have uh, clothes. This right here is you get a side of the caramel frosting. That's also really good. 
We only have the one exclusive topping option here in the UK, and it's this one, the Lotus Biscoff Crumb. In the interest of fairness, I'm gonna try it again. It's just fine. It's just fine. Maybe with a coffee, but... Nah, still not for me. Sorry, guys. Next up, we got drinks. Ah, oh, finally, I'm dying of thirst. We have coffee, obviously, and you can also get yourself a hot chocolate. Let's check out their hot chocolate. I mean, it looks like hot chocolate. Let me see. Wow, actually not that good. Ugh. Skip that. We actually have a better range of hot drinks in the UK, including pretty much a full range of espresso drinks, including an Americano, a cappuccino, a latte, a mocha, and so on. We can also get a tea and a hot chocolate. You can also customize the hot drinks with a range of syrups, including cinnamon spice, toasted marshmallow, salted caramel, and more. Although if you put any of those in a cup of tea, I will fight you. In the US, we have way more cold drink options than hot. Here are the following exclusive cold drink options. First up, cinnamon roll cold brew iced coffee. Uh, Another victim of the Uber driver. Ooh. <laughs> I'm falling apart. <laughs> Pretty good. Too sweet. Then we got the raspberry lemonade. Also, missing two inches. Ubified. I mean, I don't want to give the guy a bad rating, but like, look, I have not sipped any of these. Oh my God, this raspberry lemonade is great. Shout out to Greta Thurberg. I'm gonna use the uh, use my straw twice. I care about the environment. <laughs> no more single-use plastic. This is the frozen raspberry lemonade. Whoa, that's like powerful. This is really good. Bottle of milk. No thanks. And of course, fountain drinks. And I'm the most bummed because out of all the drinks that spilled. We have so many flavors to choose from. Let's get those on the screen. But the one I specifically wanted was this one, was the Pib Extra. Pib Extra's perfectly fine. It's a Dr. Pepper wannabe. Back in the 90s, 97, 98 or whatever, Mr. Pib changed his formula to Pib Extra. They're trying to get in on Dr. Pepper's market share. It's so annoying. But the problem is, is that there's no Mr. Pib anymore. 30 years of no Mr. Pibb. This is ridiculous. I am using my platform right now to talk to the executives at Pibb Extra or Mr. Pibb, release the Mr. Pibb recipe. I'm begging you. It doesn't have any value for you. You're not making it, so there's no value, right? You're just sitting on the recipe, you're not even making it? It's worthless to you. It's priceless to me. And I don't want you people watching. This happened last time. People were messaging me like, oh yeah, we got Mr. Pib here at the Walmart. It's like, it's Pib Extra. It's not Mr. Pib. They're different. Okay? If anyone watching has cans of Mr. Pib from the 90s, connect with me. I will buy it off of you. I'll pay for the shipping. That stays in the video or I quit. We have a few exclusive cold drinks over here in the UK, including an iced latte, a strawberry lemonade, and a mango lemonade. I got the strawberry lemonade today. Pretty pleasant, quite refreshing. Also in the UK, is it true that you guys considered lemonade to be more like a carbonated lemon beverage like Sprite? That's true, Joe. If you ask for a lemonade in the UK, expect something that's carbonated and usually clear, so more like a Sprite. Well, I will say Cinnabon seem to be doing it kind of the American way, so maybe you'd approve of that one. Now you can also get something called a chilata in the US and the UK. However, over here, they come in flavors of Oreo cookies and cream, strawberries and cream, which I got, and the double chocolate mocha. That's just okay. Don't bother. In the UK, chilatas come in five flavors. Cinnamon roll, strawberry, mango, caramel latte, and chocolate mocha. I got the cinnamon roll one today. Actually looks pretty good. It also looked even more impressive when the whipped cream was kind of in a nice swirl. It's just like a, again, quite sweet, but pretty like luxurious cinnamony milkshake. It certainly seems like it. I cannot remember a time when there wasn't one in any mall I've gone to. You can always smell it before you see it. It's impossible to separate the scent of Cinnabon from the mall and vice versa. It's like a soundtrack to the memory, but how it smells. So Cinnabon is like the smell track to malls. Does that make sense? And that's by design. 
Cinnabon purposely put their locations away from food courts and other food stalls so the Cinnabon odor would waft and not interfere with any other smells. So if you're in the mall, you smell Cinnabon and only Cinnabon, and that's almost like nose marketing. I don't know how, else, how you would describe it. And it's really smart, right? Because when you smell it, man, you smell it, and you're like, there it is, I gotta have one, so. Is Cinnabon a meal, a snack, a dessert? I'm gonna go with snack. Um, I feel like one of those regular Cinnabons, I could just eat one of those easily, maybe one and a half. I don't really know my Cinnabon limit. I just kind of find out about these little guys and I feel like I could easily knock out half this tray. Oh. I don't think it should be a meal because that could like do some damage to your body. As far as a dessert, it seems weird to me to eat a full meal and then get a Cinnabon. Like it just kind of like exists on its own. So yeah, it's weird to consider it a snack, but yeah, you're definitely not having it for lunch and you're definitely not having it after a meal, so. By default, snack. In the UK, a single Cinnabon classic roll will cost you two pounds 99 pence, which at the time of recording this was $3.65. In the US, a single Cinnabon classic roll will cost you $7.19. That makes this single US roll 97% more expensive. That is hilarious. But does the price change if you bulk buy? A six pack of classic rolls in the UK will cost you £10.49, which at the time of recording was $12.80. So by spending three and a half times the amount of money, you're getting six times the amount of Cinnabon, which is a pretty good deal. In the US, a six pack of Cinnabon classic rolls will cost you $24.99. So even when you are bulk buying, it's 95% more expensive to buy in the US. For that same 500% increase in food, we pay 247% more money. It's not often on Food Wars that it's much cheaper in the UK than it is in the US to buy fast food. How's that feel, Joe? Well, it's Cinnabon and I will pay whatever it takes. This stuff is amazing. They could double the price, I'm still eating it. The UK Cinnabon website doesn't give a full nutritional breakdown, including things like the fat and the sugar content of Cinnabon. However, when we got this Cinnapack, I noticed that they actually have a full breakdown on the box. Here, we're given the information for 100 grams worth of classic Cinnabon rolls. You might remember from earlier when we weighed one roll, we found out that it was pretty much exactly 200 grams. So doubling those numbers gives us the stats for a full roll in the UK. Here's everything that's in a classic Cinnabon roll in the UK. So that's almost 40% of your daily recommended calories, 80% of your daily saturated fat, and over 110% of your daily sugar. To put the calories into context, one of these rolls is like eating three McDonald's hamburgers. And here's everything in a classic Cinnabon roll in the US. You are reading that right, 61 grams of sugar. And for some reason, 1,150 milligrams of sodium? That puts us slightly ahead of the UK in every single category. I mean, look at that sodium. That is way higher for some reason. That's exactly 50% of your daily sodium in one roll. What about some other, even more unhealthy menu items? The most calorific roll in the UK is the Lotus Biscoff roll, which clocks in at 1,019 calories. That's a hefty increase on the standard roll, as well as being over half of your daily caloric allowance. Or as we now use to quantify things, four McDonald's hamburgers. The least healthy roll in the US is the caramel pecan bun, which is 1,090 calories. This is also the most caloric thing on the entire US menu, sort of. A single caramel pecan bun roll is 1,090 calories, but according to Cinnabon, if you get them in a pack of four or six, the calories of each individual roll increases to 1,160. It is unclear why that is the case, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess because they dump way more frosting on it. The most calorific thing on the UK menu actually isn't a roll. It's this, a 16 ounce cinnamon roll chilata. One of these contains a whopping 1,231 calories. That means that one of these large cinnamon roll chilatas combined with one of our classic cinnamon rolls in the UK would put you pretty much exactly at your 2,000 calorie daily limit. Cinnamon does not disclose a full ingredients list in the US, only allergens. The website in the UK also didn't contain ingredients information, but once again, the box provided us with all of the ingredients of a classic cinnamon roll, and it is a lot. 
But are there any ingredients which you need to look out for? The bun itself is pretty much fine despite the sheer number of ingredients. The things to watch out for are actually found in the frosting. The frosting contains an imitation vanilla extract, which in turn contains E1520. This is also known as propylene glycol. It's fairly common in foods and in small doses is used as a carrier for ingredients which aren't soluble in water. However, it can be toxic in large doses. It's one of the main ingredients in antifreeze as it lowers the freezing point of water. Too much propylene glycol could lead to internal bleeding and kidney failure. Hmm. The good news is that you're unlikely to ever hit these levels from food. Just don't go drinking antifreeze. The lemon extract in the frosting also contains E102, sometimes known as yellow 5 or tartrazine. It's a somewhat controversial yellow food dye. It was part of a panic in the UK about food colorings causing hyperactivity in children, although eventually it was shown that there was limited evidence for this. A 2015 study also found that yellow number 5 can damage your white blood cells, which hmm, makes you likely to develop tumors and cancer. See us out, dancing rats. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Little Caesars in the US and the UK. This is Food Wars. Little Caesars in the US sells hot and ready pizzas in one size, 14 inches. Closer to 13 and a half, I'll let it slide though. In the UK, Little Caesars hot and ready pizzas only come in one size, 12 inches. That means that the surface area of a UK Little Caesars pizza is 113.1 square inches. The surface area of a US Little Caesars pizza is 153.94 square inches. That makes the pizza 36% larger than the UK's. Now we can get crazy bread in the UK and we ordered it from our Little Caesars, but unfortunately they forgot it. If they remember your crazy bread, it looks like you get four pieces with an order according to the website. Too bad for the UK, but the US, we did get our crazy bread and an order of crazy bread comes with eight sticks, eight crazy sticks. It wouldn't, of course, be a order of crazy bread without the crazy sauce. To add insult to injury, they gave us just the crazy sauce, but without the bread. Let's weigh it anyway to see how much we get. A side of crazy sauce in the UK weighs seven grams. So 159 grams. Whoa, it's so crazy. No, it's, not. it's fine. I wouldn't call the sauce crazy. Misunderstood, maybe, but it feels like the sauce kind of has it under control. This is a very mild mannered, well thought out, well-measured sauce. Another item available in both countries is cheese bread. I'll say on the medium rare side of cooked, 7.5 inches across and 5.5 inches wide. I would like to note that in the US, our cheese bread is called Italian cheese bread. Ooh, that's almost exactly nine inches. Seven inches? If you want to get a small pizza at a Little Caesars, just get the Italian cheese bread inside of sauce. Some assembly required. Here are all the Little Caesars menu items in the UK that you won't find in the US. Here is all of the Little Caesars menu items you can get in the US that you won't find in the UK. Before we talk about some of the default pizza options, we'll talk about some of the customization options you get in the UK that you guys can't change in the US. For example, over here we can sub out the tomato sauce base for barbecue sauce or peri-peri sauce. I think the peri-peri sauce is kind of a nod to the UK's obsession with peri-peri. You guys know how much we love our Nando's. I think Little Caesars are trying to get in on that as well. Nando's just, just dropped to their <laughs> knees in Tesco. Just like, oh my God, no. The peri-peri option doesn't stop there because you can also add peri-peri seasoning to the crust of your pizza at Little Caesars. The US customizations for the crust, round, which I guess is regular, but we also have thin crust, stuffed crust, Detroit style deep dish, and stuffed crust deep dish. For bake, we also do a well done. Uh, cheese, you can get obviously regular cheese, but no cheese or light cheese. Sauce, same thing, light, normal, extra, no sauce. Now let's talk about some of the pizza options in the UK you won't find on the menu in the US. Here we have the barbecue chicken pizza. If you stare at this thing for too long, uh, you will be lured into a hypnotic trance. The barbecue sauce is very sweet and kind of becomes the main thing that you can taste. If that's your thing, do it, not really mine. Over this way, we have the spicy peri-peri. The peri-peri is quite gentle, just like a little bit of heat maybe, but to call that like a spicy peri-peri, I think they've oversold the spicy and they've also kind of oversold the peri-peri. Our next pizza is this one. It's called the Quattro. What they've done is take a pizza and divide it into fours and then top those individually. So you have two slices of margarita, two slices of pepperoni, two slices of chicken and mushroom, and two slices of peppers, tomatoes, and sweet corn. All right, this says SC pepperoni, stuffed crust pepperoni. I mean, this looks like, I mean, pretty generous with the pepperoni. It's a bit more um, neon colored than I'd like. The crust, of course, is stuffed with mozzarella cheese. Yeah, yeah, not, not bad. All right, let's just try. 
Sorry, stuffed crust. People just kind of don't care about it. Something newer to the Little Caesars menu here in the U.S. is something called Slice and Sticks, which is half pizza, half breadsticks. For the consumer that wants a little variety, just them by themselves, don't want to get a whole pizza and a whole thing of sticks. I want to point out that Slice and Sticks come in what I think is this, a.k.a. the classic. We also get bacon Slice and Sticks and jalapeno Slice and Sticks. Throw on your grass skirts, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to Hawaii. This is the Hula Hawaiian, which, of course, is bacon and pineapple. Uh, I think pineapple and peach is perfectly fine. This Hawaiian's not very good, but the before mentioned thin crust, thin crust pepperoni. It's pretty good if you want to pay the exact same price for literally half the pizza. So far for Little Caesars, the pepperoni's winning across the board. Little Caesars got me through some financial rough patches, so I don't be too hard on them, but I mean, some of I'm like, oh yeah, my early 20s. Great. Five meat feast. Count with me here. Pepperoni, ham, Sausage, hamburger, bacon, and yeah, I think it's like a seasoned beef. I don't like when they go ham and pork or two different meats. I know they're two different, but it's kind of like they're pretty close. Or it should be five meats, two animals. The seasoned ground beef or sausage looks a lot like mouse turds, making this incredibly unappetizing. You're trying too hard with this one. Then we have a few deluxe options in the UK, starting with a pepperoni deluxe. If you're wondering what makes this deluxe when compared to a standard pepperoni, they just take some extra pepperoni and add it to the pizza and then sprinkle it with Grana Padano cheese. I will say, like, it does look slightly more deluxe than the rest. Let's see if it tastes deluxe. It might just be a placebo effect, but it does kind of taste like the best one I've had so far. I don't know if I'd stretch to, like, deluxe as an adjective, but slightly better for sure. Maybe just rename it the slightly better pepperoni. Something that here in the U.S. our Little Caesars has, I've never heard of this before, and I don't know exactly what they're, they're doing. A series of pizzas, two pizzas, called, and this is all one word, Extra Most Bestest. The Extra Most Bestest Cheese and Pepperoni. Is this just rebranding the plain cheese and the plain... What makes this Extra Most Bestest? All right, let's find out together. It's an upgrade take on their classic pepperoni pizza that offers 80% more pepperoni and uses 25% more cheese. Okay, so more cheese and more pepperoni. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Can someone graphics take a screenshot of that? We'll, we'll compare this to, there's, there's a pepperoni that's coming up that has a lot more on here, so. Next up is another deluxe option, the Margarita Deluxe. Just as like a linguistic note, in the UK, if you see a cheese and tomato pizza on the menu, it's almost always referred to as a margarita. Everyone knows what that means. It's a slightly more traditional Italian way of saying cheese and tomato. Whereas in America, it seems like you guys all just have to say cheese pizza or you don't really understand what you're getting. To turn this margarita into a deluxe version, it seems like all they've really done is added, I think some herbs and then some chopped up pieces of actual tomato. All I really have to say about most of these is that they're fine. Our final deluxe pizza exclusive is the Mushroom Deluxe. Again, it looks like a fairly standard mushroom pizza with, I think, the herbs again and the Grana Padano sprinkled around the edge. It's also funny that they call this one a Mushroom Deluxe pizza because there isn't actually a standard mushroom on the menu. So I guess if you uh, like mushrooms on your pizza, you're being forced into having the deluxe fancy version. This is the old world Fansaroni pepperoni. Go on. Now that's pepperoni, let's go. The cups. Oh yeah! Now, remember that one a minute ago that we just saw that was the, the extra best mostest, or whatever the hell it's called? Yes! Yes! Oh, the crispy. This is pretty good. I will say, the dough on all these pizzas are a lot spongier. I'm hoping that that is a choice to make it spongier and not that they just didn't cook these through. <laughs> I'll find out in a couple hours. Of the regular round pizzas, last and certainly least, veggie. As before mentioned, version of pizza you can get here in the U.S. We have a Detroit-style deep dish pizza at Little Caesars. You can get the ultimate supreme, the veggie, the pepperoni, the three meats, Hawaiian, and just regular cheese. I went with the pepperoni because I feel that's classic Detroit style. Hmm, Detroit's. Let us know in the comments how they did. True Detroit style puts the sauce or a little bit of sauce on top. They did not. So it just looks like a really thick pizza. Love our bread in this country. I would suggest against selling this in Detroit. <laughs> so what we have here is the UK only pizza. What we've done is take all of the customization options you can only find in the UK and combine them onto one pizza. So what this pizza has is the peri peri sauce base, a barbecue sauce drizzle, peri peri chicken, regular chicken, red onions, sweet corn, and tomatoes. Honestly, that's not terrible. Far from the worst UK only creation that we've ever made. The peri sauce base seems to just be tomato sauce with like a bit of peri seasoning kind of mixed into it. So you still get a bit of the sweetness from the tomato and a very gentle warmth from that. 
The barbecue sauce is kind of the dominant flavor again, but as far as UK only pizzas go, it's not bad. A segment that Yuli, we haven't done this in forever, it feels like. A USA only, that's right. This is a pizza you can only get in the United States of America at a Little Caesars. Of all the many USA only options, we went with a well done pizza with a stuffed crust, extra sauce, light cheese, old world pepperoni, pineapple, and black olives. Oh man. The extra sauce, I think, is what really. Oh god. The extra sauce is what really ruined this because now it's just all sliding off. Ah. Oh. It's really bad. It's really bad because it's like falling apart. And also we got this separately, so this, this was actually just came out of the oven. It's like really hot. Then we're onto the sides. We have two exclusives in the UK. Now, while we didn't get any of the crazy bread, at least we got the crazy puffs. They take the dough, they form it into a kind of cupcake muffin shape, which is then filled with some tomato sauce, some cheese and pepperoni. See the grease like dripping out of that as soon as I bit him. They're not bad. They're on like a mid-level of the crazy scale. And we can also get veggie crazy puff. It's the same cheese and sauce base, but then instead of the pepperoni, they've added corn, peppers, and onion. We also have stuffed crazy bread. Remember that crazy bread from earlier? Now it's stuffed. What the fuck? This is like a giant mozzarella stick. Isn't really melted. Oh man, remarkably bland. Avoid. Caesar's got wings. Oven roasted barbecue and buffalo. I'm starting to get a headache. I can't for the life of me pinpoint what is making me suddenly so nauseous. We have a couple of exclusive sauces in the UK, which means it's time for Sauce Talk. We have three sauces in the UK that you won't find on an American menu, which is garlic and herb. When you order a Domino's, it comes by default with a garlic and herb dip in the UK. People go crazy for that dip. People really love it. So a few other places have tried to kind of jump on that bandwagon and this is their version. We then have a peri peri sauce. And finally, we have a ketchup on the menu. I'm questioning anybody who eats pizza with ketchup. I'm gonna be honest. And we don't really even have any sides on the menu that go with ketchup. So the garlic and herb is defeating me. Leon, help. It's got quite a harsh taste actually, surprisingly harsh. Try the peri peri. So the thing is peri peri has a very distinct flavor. It's a specific type of chili. All I'm really getting from this is just like chili pepper heat. You know, we have ketchup. I can't quite put my finger on it. I'm gonna literally put my finger on it. It's got almost more of like a tomato soup flavor to it, which I don't hate. After my preamble about how much I do not think ketchup should go with any of these pizzas, it actually ended up being my favorite of these three sauces. I think that's more of a comment on the other two not being very nice rather than the ketchup being good. You have a variety of four exclusive delicious dipping sauces. Butter garlic flavor, buffalo ranch, cheesy jalapeno, and just regular ranch. Little Caesars in the UK also has one dessert option you won't find in the US, chocolate chip cookies. So we got desserts, cookie dough brownies. One has Twix pieces, the other has M&M minis. Very, very sweet. Kind of weird, actually. Finally, let's talk about drinks. In the UK, Little Caesars carries Coca-Cola branded drinks, including obviously Coca-Cola, but then also things like Monster Energy and Oasis, which is a bit of a British classic. Comes in either a citrus punch or summer fruits. It's kind of like a diluted fruit juice. Refreshing. Finally, I can have some to drink. They had Coke products, we got Pepsi products. Oh, you know, the classic Pepsi. Mug root beer, Mountain Dew, and Starry. It's the new one, it's what replaced Sierra Mist. R.I.P. Sierra Mist, thank God. And it's like exactly what 7-Up tastes like. They invented 7-Up, great job, guys. Unfortunately, Little Caesars in the UK doesn't give us a full nutritional breakdown, only calories. A hot and ready cheese pizza in the UK is 1,700 calories. That's 85% of your recommended daily allowance. A hot and ready US cheese pizza is 1,950 calories. That's 97.5% of your recommended daily intake. Also, the sodium, good Lord, 160% of your recommended daily intake. The most calorific pizza in the UK is this, three meat treat. A whole one of these contains 1,910 calories or 95.5% of your daily allowance. We also have the three meat treat, but ours is 2,870 calories. That's 960 calories more than the UK version. And ours is 143.5% of your daily calories. You're not gonna believe this. The three meat treat isn't our biggest calorie pie. That award goes to, oddly enough, this. The pepperoni and cheese stuffed crust pizza. This whole thing, 3,340 calories. That's 167% of your daily calorie intake. And of course, the sodium. The sodium, 300 
and 80% your recommended daily sodium intake. So, pizza's cut in eight slices, so one slice contains 1,094 milligrams of sodium, which is almost half of your daily amount in just one slice. RIP my kidneys. A hot and ready margarita or pepperoni in the UK will cost you five pounds, which at the time of recording this is six dollars and four cents. The Little Caesars hot and ready pizza has become a contentious topic in the US in recent years. Forever, this was just five dollars, but in 2022 they raised the price for the first time in nearly 25 years. Price can vary depending on your location, but where I am here in Southern California, a hot and ready cheese pizza is now six dollars and 49 cents, or five pounds 40. Our most expensive pizzas are the Ultimate Supreme, Spicy Peri Peri, Barbecue Chicken, and Three Meat Treat, which will all cost you 10 pounds. This was my first time trying Little Caesars Pizza because currently there is only one of them in the whole UK. It's in Chelliston, just near Derby. Having now tried it, and also with the context of the price, I think I'm fairly confident in saying this is a pretty low rung pizza. It is very rare to find anything of this size for five pounds in the UK when you come to pizzas, but in kind of return for that, you're not getting the best quality. I think in terms of my taste of pizza power rankings for the UK, this would be sitting fairly low, but for five pounds, it's kind of hard to complain because that is quite cheap. I don't know, how do you feel about it, Joe? When researching for this video, I looked it up and I was surprised to find out, and you might be surprised as well to learn this, Little Caesars is the third biggest pizza chain in America. Totally surprised. Little Caesars recently became the official pizza of the NFL. What? I always thought, this is me talking here, Little Caesars was always the cheapest option. Also, the quality was never that good. So I was surprised to learn that this pizza is A, still around, B, very popular, and C, after this video, eh, not that bad. I dogged down Little Caesars for a while, but I mean, I've had worse. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Tim Hortons in the US and the UK. This is Food Wars. Coffees at a UK Tim Hortons come in three portion sizes. A small, which is 12 ounces, a regular, which is 16 ounces, and a large, which is 20 ounces. So hot coffee from a US Tim Hortons comes in four sizes. Small, 10 ounces, medium, 15 ounces, large, 20 ounces, and extra large, 24 ounces. Let's measure the largest coffee in both countries to see if we're getting as much as we've been promised. It's supposed to be 24 ounces, it's 22 ounces. So we're missing two ounces. I don't know where they went. I personally don't care if there's two ounces missing, but I feel like there are people who would take this very seriously. I assume if you're getting an extra large, you want all 24 ounces. <laughs> They've actually only given us 18 ounces, two whole ounces missing. And it doesn't stop there. This is the Take 12 Coffee Traveler, which is the size of a small child, I feel like. Um, for when you need 12 cups of coffee for yourself, or I assume friends, but probably yourself, honestly. I don't drink coffee, so if I drank this whole thing, I think I would die. You know how people are like, oh, this is how you kill a Victorian child? Like, this is how you would kill me. <laughs> I feel like this is what Joe drinks like every morning now, <laughs> if we're being honest. Tim Horton's signature iced caps also come in three sizes in the UK, and they're supposed to be the same sizes as our hot coffees, 12, 16, and 20 ounces. When we got these, I was shocked because I'd never seen one before and they kind of look like slushies. They've sort of melted a little bit and gone a little bit sad. Our ice caps only come in three sizes, small, 12 ounces, medium, 16 ounces, and large, 20 ounces. So the same as the UK. Okay, actually really similar to Colada, like very, very similar. Again, let's check the biggest one to see if we're getting as much as we've been promised. Oh, that was a big lump. Oh no, oh no. Oh no. Uh, uh. It's just under 16 ounces. It's supposed to be 20, so we're missing four ounces. Maybe they gave us four ounces of whipped cream, I don't know. The liquid line is only actually coming up to like 13 fluid ounces. There is another line of like foamy stuff, which takes you closer to 17. I don't know how much you can count the foam, because I feel like that's not proper liquid. I don't know enough about fluid dynamics to uh, know if that's actually true or not, but in my mind, we've been shortchanged here. 13 ounces of actual liquid, plus maybe three or four ounces of foam. <laughs> that's actually really tasty. This is like dangerously good. <laughs> I don't want to stop drinking this. <laughs> Got a long shoot ahead of us, let's go. They're already pretty sweet, but apparently you can get these made with chocolate milk, so you can get it even sweeter. It's their secret menu item. Donuts from a UK Tim Hortons come in three portion sizes. 
as a single donut, as a box of six, or as a dozen donuts. These look really good. In the US, we also get Tim Hortons donuts in serving sizes of one, six, and 12. Are the donuts themselves a different size in the US or the UK? We're gonna weigh a glazed old fashioned donut to find out. So close. 68 grams. God, grow up, Harry. <laughs> Whoa, we're 58 grams. So we're missing 10 grams? <laughs> it's like suspicious. Is your flour heavier? I feel like you've rigged your scale. I don't know. I'm gonna put out some conspiracy theories. <laughs> Tim Horton's Timbits come in three sizes in the UK. There's a box of 10, there's a box of 20, or our largest size, there's a box of 50. US Timbits come in four portion sizes. One, 10, 20, and 40. This one is so funny. <laughs> I don't think there's munchkins with sprinkles on them. Tim Hortons is kind of gourmet. Oh my god. It's so dense. This is really good. These are not like munchkins, I take that back. I'm so sorry, Dunkin' Donuts, I still love you. In the uh, Dunkin' Donuts episode, I tried to fit as many donut holes in my mouth at once as I could. So you know what this means. I think it's stupid that he makes us do this every time. It's such a guy thing, but yeah, let's beat Harry. I could fit ton in my mouth. They're really dense. I think if they weren't as dense, I could put more. I don't want to admit. I don't want to admit Harry won. This was rigged. Um, I don't know how, but it was rigged. It was definitely rigged. I don't know, man. Yeah, okay, Harry won. Mm. Whatever. We still won the Revolutionary War. Huh? <laughs> Here are the Tim Hortons menu items from the UK that you won't find in the US. And here's everything at a US Tim Hortons you won't find in the UK. We'll start down this end with the donuts. This is the Canadian maple donut. This is the maple caramel donut, the rainbow donut, the strawberry and vanilla donut, a banoffee pie, chocolate brownie donut, a caramel apple fritter, and a red velvet cheesecake donut. These are almost like too much for me, a lot of these ones. I have like a slightly more simple taste when it comes to donuts. I like just the classic jam. I think it's the chocolate brownie one that's calling my name the most. It's not bad. The donut itself is slightly dry, as are the brownie chunks on top. So I think the two of those combine to give like a fairly dry donut experience. Maybe like a little more sauce in the middle, or just wash it down with an ice cap, and then you'll be fine. We also have some exclusive donuts. Not as many, but you know, we have four. This is the honey dip, sour cream glazed. This one does look cool. Chocolate dip, which this does just look like a chocolate donut, so like, I don't really understand how this is an exclusive. And this is the honey, honey cruller, cruller. I don't know how to pronounce it. So actually, we're, we're gonna check that real quick. We are looking at how to pronounce this word as well as how to say more interesting and related word. Crawler, crawler. Pretty straightforward once you know. Crawler, not crawler. crawler but rather crawler, and now you know. I'm probably not saying it completely right, but um, I think we're gonna live with it because I think if we try to say it completely right, it's just gonna be worse for all of us. The honey, honey cruller. Hmm, I like didn't taste the honey at first, but it's good. Do you wanna try the sour cream one? I don't know if I like the sour cream. <laughs> what the, you taste the sour cream. <laughs> you like taste and smell it right away, I think. <laughs> Take a bite. <laughs> Take a little bite. <laughs> we also have a couple of exclusive Timbit varieties. Sour cream glazed Timbit and the sour cream blueberry glazed Timbit. They really like sour cream, huh? Or do they think we like sour cream so they're adding it to everything? 
It's like when you go to like the American aisle of like a grocery store in another country and it's just all like containers of sour cream. <laughs> We also have a load of breakfast options that you won't find in the US. We'll start with this one. It's a veggie sausage and egg muffin. I gotta say, this looks pretty good. This is a vegetarian sausage patty with cheese and egg, as you might imagine. This looks good, like the texture looks there. It's kind of got those like fibers that you used to for me. Honestly, that's not bad at all. There is a chance that you could give this to me and I would not know that it wasn't meat, which for a meat eater is pretty much the highest praise that I can give that. Next up, we have an option called the stack. So for both the sausage and the bacon muffins, you have the option to turn it into a stack. What this means is adding a hash brown into your muffin. I don't really understand where the stack thing came from in the UK because Tim Hortons aren't the only ones doing it. I think Subway also have like sub stacks where you can just add hash browns to anything and apparently that makes it a stack. In the US, we have avocado toast options. I was gonna hold it up like the Animal Crossing style, it's kind of flimsy. And when they hold up like the fish and they're like, this is what I caught. <laughs> The bread's just really thin. I feel like avocado toast usually comes with like a really like crusty piece of bread, like really thick. And we're onto breakfast sandwiches, both in the form of English muffins and bagels. There's the double stacked breakfast sandwich, which we weren't able to get. We have the sausage bagel breakfast sandwich, bacon bagel breakfast sandwich, the egg and cheese bagel breakfast sandwich, and the bagel B-E-L-T, bacon, egg, lettuce, and tomato. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. It doesn't, it, it doesn't look like a bad bagel, but this isn't the bagel I would want to go and get. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah, it does feel, it, I, I don't know if it feels rubbery, but it's like, actually, it, the inside's a little, I don't know about that. You know, we're filming this in New York. We have high standards for bagels. The UK has one breakfast wrap option, the big breakfast wrap, which contains a hash brown, egg, bacon, cheese, and sausage. That looks like the equivalent of our loaded farmer's breakfast wrap. It's really stuck in here. Okay, we got it out. This is hefty. I wonder why they call ours the loaded farmer's breakfast, but theirs is like the big breakfast. So they, they think like this is what like American farmers eat. And they're like, oh, that's a big breakfast. Like, that's what I want today. I don't, I don't think this is what would keep me going <laughs> if I needed to go out on the farm for a day. But we can also get the loaded breakfast wrap and then the breakfast wrap snacker. This is little and cute. It's a snack wrap dupe. Sorry, McDonald's, Let's bring it back. <laughs> yeah, snack size, that's the right size. Next up, the UK has bagels on the menu. You can get these either as plain or with cream cheese. I think I did ask for cream cheese and they might have forgotten it. So now I just have a very dry bagel, which I will probably not be eating. Over here, we love our bagels, and Tim Hortons reflects that by providing lots of options. We have the everything bagel, cinnamon raisin bagel, the 12 grain bagel, and a pretzel bagel. I don't know if I've seen before. It's a, it's a cool flavor in theory, and I appreciate the options. I, I think it's cool that they're trying to provide a good variety for us. They have more bagel options than I thought they would have. If bagels aren't for you, but you want another kind of bread thing, we also have toast on the menu of the UK. Although they wouldn't actually give it to me today because they've run out of the jam that it's usually served with. So unfortunately I couldn't get it. The next one is a classic British breakfast item, the bacon roll. As the name suggests, it's a bread roll with bacon. You can get them with a range of sauces. This one has ketchup, but I think you can also get brown sauce. Compared to the standard fast food bacon quality that I'm used to seeing, this is like a pretty, pretty thick piece of like back British bacon compared to like McDonald's bacon, this has way more flavor. Actually tastes of pork, which is always nice. We can also get breakfast biscuit options. We have the Simply Sausage Biscuit, and then we have the Simply Bacon Biscuit. I know this is controversial. Biscuits and scones aren't the same thing, I'm sorry. The scones are definitely denser. I get that they might look similar, so maybe putting biscuits with savory things seems weird, but it's, it's not. I think you just need to try like a good Southern biscuit. I say as a girl from New Jersey, cause I clearly know what I'm talking about, but this isn't a scone. They're not similar at all. I'm annoying, so I've gone to afternoon tea here in the US and in London, so I know the difference. It's, it's not the same thing. UK Tim Hortons also sells pancakes. Now these are American style pancakes. So they are small, round, and thicker than British pancakes, which tend to be more like crepes. They come in portions of two. This one comes with some Nutella. You can also get maple syrup pancakes, which is just the same, but with a little thing of maple syrup or maple flavored golden syrup, because apparently that's what we have in the UK. Or you can get bacon maple pancakes. 
which are two pancakes with bacon and also the syrup. <laughs> the bacon pancakes. Um, oh, there is more. Okay, there's more. I, I thought that <laughs> I thought that this was the only bacon that we had on our maple bacon pancakes, but thankfully they've actually layered it with some more underneath. The bacon that you're getting on the pancakes isn't the same bacon as you're getting in your bacon roll. This is like streaky bacon. That's what we call it in the UK. Whereas this is what we would call back bacon, which has the kind of like medallion and then the little fatty bit on the end. I'm not sure why they haven't just used one uniform type of bacon for the whole menu. To British people, bacon and pancakes is like kind of a weird combination as it is. So I don't think it would have been made significantly weirder by putting like British bacon on these. We go to the store and get Canadian bacon, which is ham, which is I guess this British bacon, which is like, what do they call it? Back bacon? Like th this is getting overly complicated. There's bacon and then there's ham. Your ha that is ham. Our last breakfast items are these omelet bites, which come in spinach and egg whites and bacon and cheese. These are basically like Starbucks's egg bites, which are good, I love them, but yeah. I feel like the spinach chunks are kind of big, I don't know. And then we have the croissant, which I don't, I, I don't know if they all look like this, but it's kind of making me uncomfortable that the ends are touching. I feel like they shouldn't do that. I don't know. It's like when you walk in on your toothbrushes touching, you know? Then we have some sort of breakfast, sort of snack exclusives. The chocolate chip muffin, the fruit explosion muffin. Oh, what fruits are going to be exploding? It'd be cool if it was like a gusher situation. If you're gonna put explosion in the name, I feel like you should be doing something. And the wild blueberry muffin. We also get two cookies you can't get in the UK. Chocolate chunk cookie and oatmeal raisin cookie. I still don't know who would willingly eat an oatmeal raisin cookie. Do you eat oatmeal raisin? Oh, <gasps> both of you? Well, yeah, that's like, no one actually likes oatmeal raisin cookies. It's when someone, when someone brings in oatmeal raisin cookies, you're hoping it's chocolate chip, and then you, when you find out it's oatmeal raisin, you're like, what the f I just don't get why you would want raisins in a cookie. I'm sorry, coffee. Yeah. Now, later in the day, you can get lunch options from a UK Tim Hortons. Unfortunately, we went there slightly too early to actually get these, but if you arrive later, here are the exclusive options. Tim's crispy chicken stack with or without bacon, Tim's crispy chicken sandwich, crispy meatless chicken sandwich, grilled chicken wrap or a crispy chicken wrap, a tuna wrap or a vegan wrap, chicken tenders, chicken and mozzarella panini, tuna and cheese melt, ham and cheese melt, tomato and basil soup, or potato wedges. The lunch options exclusive to the US include a tuna salad sandwich, chicken salad sandwich, turkey bacon club, ham and Swiss sandwich, BLT, Chipotle steak wrap, Chipotle chicken bacon wrap, Chipotle chicken wrap, and chili. Cause you know, that's, that's what we really want, I guess. I do like chili, but that's interesting. Now let's look at some drinks you can only find at a UK Tim Hortons. Cause I've only looked at the US menu. So I'm gonna say you can only find in the UK. I bet some of these will be available in Canada. And there's gonna be angry Canadians in the comments. How angry can Canadians really get? I feel like they're pretty polite in general. Let's start with some cold beverages. Over here, we have an iced cap supreme. So a supreme basically means that they've added some extra whipped cream and then some topping pieces to an iced cap. You can get these in a couple of flavor and topping options. There was one that was coconut, for example. This one is Oreo. So you get the extra whipped cream with some little crushed Oreo pieces. The standard iced cap was already really sweet. So I'm not sure it needs Oreo, but hey, you do you. We can also get milkshakes at a Tim Hortons in the UK. These come in a range of options, including vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, maple, or a dairy-free mango and coconut. <coughs> that went down the wrong hole, that wasn't. <laughs> that wasn't the shake's fault. <laughs> it's like banana -y, you know? Oh, it's banoffee. Took me a minute, but hey, uh, banoffee shake as well. Then we have some hot drink options as well. Here we have a caramel macchiato. You can of course get an English breakfast tea. We're in the UK. You can't really open a place and not put this on the menu. We're continuing the banoffee menu item theme with a banoffee latte, which I'm less convinced by. Yeah, banana coffee isn't really one that I have tried before. I guess technically you could have banoffee to mean banana coffee, but I think uh, if you've got banana and toffee right there, just stick with the classic. We can also get a flat white in the UK. We can also get a chai latte and a red velvet hot chocolate. The sandwich van with match of the day music. Ba 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 da ba 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 da 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 
Here are our US exclusive cold drinks. Cinnamon sugar oat milk cold brew, vanilla flavored cream cold brew with chocolate cold foam, caramel cream cold brew with cold foam, mocha cream cold brew with cold foam, sunrise sunset Tim's Boost with Red Bull, sky's the limit Tim's Boost with Red Bull, orange tangerine refresher, fruit smoothie, mixed berry, and frozen lemonade. Here are the US exclusive hot drinks, the Take 12, which coffee's not exclusive, but you can only get this giant size in the US, French vanilla and steep tea. And that's interesting that the UK doesn't get steep tea because you know, UK. Apparently this is really popular in Canada and it's, it's just tea that's made by, instead of brewing, you like leave the leaves in, in either cold or hot water and eventually the flavor comes through. But my friend said that this is really, really popular and they have different flavors. So I'm gonna make a double-double, which is apparently a big thing in Canada for Tim Hortons. And it's literally just coffee with two creams, two sugars. But it's, it's like a thing, unless I'm being set up by my friend. April, <laughs> don't, don't do this to me. I'm not strong enough. Uh oh, is half and half the same thing as cream? I feel like they are, right? I used to drink half and half, like when I was a kid. I feel like some people think that's gross, but it tastes like really good. When I was little, like, we'd go to Denny's and it's like on the table and you're just like. It tastes good. Two sugars. The few times I do drink coffee, I usually put like six to eight packets of that, but I like line them up at once and rip them so no one can tell how much sugar I'm putting in so they can't judge me. Maybe it tastes better when they make it for you. <laughs> it, it just tastes like coffee and I don't like coffee that much, so maybe that's why. Can I have my Diet Coke now? <laughs> a large iced cap from a UK Tim Hortons costs £4.39, which is $5.30. In the US, a large ice cap is $4.89 or 4.01 British pounds. That makes a US large ice cap 7.7% cheaper in the US than the UK. Six donuts at the UK Tim Hortons cost £8.99, which is $10.85. In the US, six donuts cost $8.99 or 7.38 British pounds. 20 Timbits from the UK Tim Hortons cost £7.49, which is around $9.04. In the US, 20 Timbits cost $6.29 or £5.16. Overall, it honestly seems like pretty good value compared to some of the other fast food chains that are comparable, I suppose. I feel like the breakfast deal particularly was quite good. They had like a £3.49-ish deal for a breakfast meal, including the muffin, a hash brown, and a drink, which is really good. Probably even better value than McDonald's, for example. I really love donuts. I kind of wish donuts were more like commonplace in the UK because they're not that big a thing. I feel like from what I've seen from Tim Hortons today, they've got what it takes. They should be pushing really hard into the UK market. I do think there's demand for this. A large ice cap from a UK Tim Hortons contains the following. 399 calories, 23 grams of total fat, of which 15 grams are saturated, and 44 grams of carbs, of which 42 grams are sugars. That's 20% of your daily calories, 75% of your daily saturates, and 84% of your daily sugar, which is alarming because it's really good. <laughs> a large ice cap in the US contains the following. 393 calories, 23.4 grams of total fat, 12.5 grams of saturated fat, 42.7 grams of carbs, 38.2 of which are sugars. That means that apart from total fat content, the US ice cap is actually healthier than the UK's in every other metric. <laughs> Although it's still 62.5% of your daily saturated fat and 76.4% of your daily sugar. So, you win some, you lose some. Milk.fandom.com. <laughs> if you're a huge fan of milk, that's the place to go. Oh, here you go, here's a table. Thank you, uh, Milk. The Milk Wiki is, uh, is educational. This is a good opportunity to explain the differences between the standard dairy products used in beverages in the US and the UK. To me, this is an alarming amount of saturated fat because usually when you're making a beverage like this in the UK, you'll be using either semi-skimmed milk or maybe whole milk. In the UK, semi-skimmed milk contains somewhere between one to 2% fat content, and then we have whole milk, which contains closer to 3.5 to 4% fat. These are pretty comparable to the American equivalent. So you guys have semi-skimmed milk, but that's I think 1.5 to 1.8% fat. And then you have whole milk, which is around 3.25%. What's interesting about Tim Hortons in the UK is that they've adopted a slightly more American approach to their beverages. So what they've done is actually made this with single cream instead of with milk. 
The fat content of single cream in the UK is around 18%, which I think is around what half and half is in the US. But here, that is very much the exception rather than the norm. This is very rare. You will not see this in many places. If you're making your beverages with coffee cream in the US, that can even range from 18 to 30% fat content. That's crazy. Honestly, it's tasty, but I would not want to drink these every day because that is not good for you. The most calorific Timbit in the UK is the white chocolate birthday cake Timbit, coming in at 94 calories per bit. One of these also contains 8.5 grams of sugar, which means that just one of those and a large ice cap contains your entire daily sugar allowance. Also means that I was able to fit almost a thousand calories in my mouth at once. Who knew? From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Denny's in the US and the UK. This is Food Wars. This is an all-American slam breakfast at a UK Denny's. It consists of two scrambled eggs with cheddar, two sausages, two pieces of bacon, some American style hash brown, and two triangles of toast. This bacon looks a little sad. I know you guys like crispy bacon in the US. An all-American slam breakfast in the US comes with the following by default. Three scrambled eggs with cheese, two bacon strips, two sausage links, hash browns, and a choice of either four triangles of toast or two pancakes. We went with pancakes. The largest breakfast in the UK is this, the Grand Slam Slugger. It's the same as the All-American Slam, but instead of the toast, you get two pancakes. Now, when I saw this on the menu, I didn't think changing the toast for pancakes would actually add that much size to it, but these things are huge. <laughs> I think two of these plus the rest, and that is a substantial breakfast. Our largest slam is the Lumberjack Slam. It comes with two pancakes, two or three eggs, I can't tell, grilled ham, you have a choice of two sausage links and two bacon strips or four of either, so I went with four bacon strips, hash browns, and four triangles of toast. Look at this. Now here is a guy who's ready for a full day of lumber jacking. You can get some of Denny's iconic sandwiches in the UK, including the Grand Slamwich. We're going to weigh a Grand Slamwich in both countries to see whose is bigger. Now we all know the moon's over Miami and plate version. I didn't know this, but apparently now it's in sandwich version. And here it is. You got the eggs, you got the ham, right? This is a UK moon's over Miami. I don't get that pun, I'm really sorry guys. No diner be complete without American style pancakes in the United States. An order of pancakes comes by default as a two piece. One, two, one. An order of pancakes in the UK also means two pancakes. However, when I went to order them on the website, it also gave me the option to add a single additional extra pancake for $1.99, and it let me do that up to 99 times. So if you do really, really love pancakes, you can order 101 pancakes from a UK Denny's for a small, small price of 203 pounds and 80 pence. But how big are the pancakes themselves? We're gonna measure them to find out. So our pancake, I'm gonna say 16 centimeters across, and our pancake weighs, around 147 grams. Six inches? I once caught a pancake this big. Yeah, again, the Tinder profile, like the weight of, a sing of the same pancake. This specific six inch pancake at Denny's weighs 148 grams. Here are all the items you'll find at a UK Denny's that you won't find in the US. And here's everything you'll find at a US Denny's you will not find in the UK. Let's start with the breakfast items. Our largest slam breakfast, the Grand Slam Slugger, is in fact an exclusive. We have a couple exclusive slam breakfasts in the US. The before mentioned Lumberjack. I mean, I'm curious about this, this ham, this fried ham steak. If you want to eat something <laughs> at Denny's that doesn't go straight for your arteries, you can get the Fit Slam. It is two English muffins. I see a... Uh, Spinach, egg whites, tomatoes. Looks like feta cheese, let's get in here. I bet that's great when it's hot, but it is not hot and therefore it is not great. Next up we have the veggie breakfast. In here we have what seems to be like an omelet made with kind of peppers, some spinach, and maybe some onion as well. There are these little cubes, almost cubes, little square things of potato. And then just a couple of bits of uh, either boiled or steamed broccoli. And if you're not eating eggs, we have a vegan version. It looks like all they've really done is just replace the eggs with more potato. Benny, which is of course short for Eggs Benedict. Everything needs a fun name in America. With a poached egg, ham, hollandaise sauce, not to be confused with holiday sauce. That's pretty good. Of course, we also have a Southwest Benny. Southwest, 
Oh wait, no, this is like, has like chorizo and stuff. That actually kind of rules. I'm surprised, that's actually pretty good. Something that may mystify the UK viewers, as you will see various versions throughout this video of what I'm about to show you. Biscuits and gravy, chicken biscuits and gravy. It's gonna be some sort of combination of fried chicken or some cases steak smothered in the white gravy we have, a gravy that is filled with sausage and also on our biscuits, deep fried chicken, covered in our white sauce. It's a gravy that's sausage flavored. Cheese, not a scone. Damn it, that's really good. Next to that is a Santa Fe bowl. Again, does Santa Fe just mean like salsa and chorizo? Get these type of potatoes, these sliced up seasoned ones, also some mushrooms and veggies. Another fried gravy thing. This is a country fried steak. Yes, a steak that has been fried and put our white gravy on it. And it also comes with eggs. Kind of like a big McNugget. That's kind of more beef flavored. And speaking of steaks, you get a T-bone steak and eggs. Denny's. What's with, the, what's with the onions and mushrooms, guys? I want a steak. Like, I assure you there is a steak underneath this. Yeah, there it is. There it is. T-bone. Doorstop of a steak. Look at the size of this thing. I mean, this is... <laughs> Man, they, they destroyed this piece of meat. This thing is like the most well done thing I've ever been into. It's like biting into a wallet. Skip the steak at Denny's. We have a few omelet options in the UK, but only one of them is exclusive. It's the ham and cheese omelet. I'm surprised you guys don't have these in America because I'd say ham and cheese is probably the most commonly eaten omelet in the UK. So we have exclusive omelets of our own and they are way more elaborate than the UK's simple ham and cheese. Here we have the Mile High Denver omelet, the Ultimate omelet, and the Philly cheesesteak omelet. Now you watching right now are thinking, hey Joe, which is which? I have no idea. So another game we're going to play in this episode is Omelet Roulette. What's in the omelet? What's in the omelet? So I'm gonna take a bite of each one and see if I can guess which omelet it is. All right. Denver, ham, peppers, onions, cheese. The next omelet, I'm seeing sausage. The question is, does the viewer want it to be tilted? I think if you could put a poll on the screen, do I, should he tilt it? I think a lot of people are like, please don't. <laughs> yeah, this is the ultimate one. Sausage, obviously. Bacon, peppers, onions, mushrooms, tomato, cheese. And a bit. Oh, everything's like so wet. Um, it's dripping with water. And this one must be there for the Philly cheesesteak. Grilled prime rib, peppers, onions, mushrooms, Swiss cheese. Ooh, prime. You will not find the following pancake options in the UK. Starting down here, they got the Choco Nana, which is chocolates and banana. Every one of these comes with like eggs and, and yeah, you just don't get pancakes. I, I feel like I wanna point this out. Are you aware UK, cause I haven't seen Harry's footage. Every pancake order comes with eggs and hash browns and meats. Look at this, it's ridiculous. This is so much food. Next to that is the double berry. I mean, I see strawberries. Oh, cause it's a berry pancake. Ugh, actually it's not that very good. The strawberries are weird. Hardy nine grain pancakes. Uh, I can't tell how many grains are in this pancake. Can you at home? I have no idea. And the cinnamon roll pancakes. I'm sure at this point the Cinnabon episode is out. Oh my God. Ooh, that's trouble. That's really good. And at the end, this is really funny. It's a crepe, a berry vanilla crepe. There's something weird with their strawberries. We have some exclusive pancake options of our own. One thing to point out is that Americans have this kind of like pancakes for breakfast culture and that really does not exist in the UK. Over here, pancake generally means crepe, so like a thin pancake, and they're traditionally more eaten for dessert. Denny's pancakes in the UK are the kind of thick American style ones. However, the toppings and the sauces tend to reflect our dessert pancake culture a bit more. We'll start with a classic pancake topping, which is Nutella. I pronounce it Nutella. Some people say Nutella. Who says Nutella? I've definitely, do Americans say Nutella? Yeah. You guys say Nutella? That's horrible. Please don't do that. It's Nutella. Over here we have the double chocolate pancakes. I think the double chocolate refers to the chocolate chips in the pancakes themselves and also this rather large amount of chocolate drizzle on top. Next up we have some strawberry dream pancakes, which have not held up super well in transit, I'll be honest. 
These are looking less like strawberry dream pancakes and more like strawberry nightmare pancakes. What is this sauce that's just like fallen off the pancake? Like a very sweet, maybe like white chocolate, vanilla-y type cream thing. Over here we have the Oreo cookie pancakes. I think there are chocolate pieces or maybe the cookie pieces in the pancake as well. Then it's topped with some more of this kind of sweet cream stuff they have. Next up we have a Kinder Bueno pancake. Do Americans know what Kinder Bueno is? It's a chocolate bar, very popular in Europe and the UK. I don't know what the cream stuff inside of it is, but one of the best tasting things in the world. And then finally, because it's near Valentine's Day here in the UK while we're filming this, we can get some Valentine's pancakes. These red velvet ones. These are the exact colors that you see on snakes that you're supposed to run away from if you see them in the wild. We don't have any crepes on the menu in the UK, but we do have waffles. These are also generally desserts in the UK and Denny serves them in the following flavors. Here we have a fresh fruit waffle. Each one seems to be one whole circular waffle cut into quarters and then topped with powdered sugar and some other toppings. With the fresh fruit one, you're getting some banana and some strawberry. Here we have a golden waffle. It's a waffle with golden syrup, which is kind of like a British version of maple syrup. Some of the waffles on the menu also come as Liège style waffles. Liège is a place in Belgium, Belgian waffles. They're a little bit more dense than the American waffles. Next up, we have a Nutella waffle, not Nutella. Then we have a Kinder Bueno waffle. The sauce stuff really does capture the flavor of Kinder Bueno. You can just get a plain waffle with just some of the whipped butter that you get with the pancakes. And then finally, another Liège option is the banana and salted caramel waffle. Great flavor combination, big fan of that. Now that we've reset the table, let's move on to some other options, starting with sandwiches. Start here with the New York Melt. We're more American than the Americans. Let's try the pastrami. We're not very good at like deli meats in the UK on average. Up next, we have the three cheese melt. Pretty much just a grilled cheese with three types of cheese in here. Here we have the mac and me. This is a grilled cheese sandwich filled with mac and cheese and bacon bits. We've just been discussing double carbs and established that there are circumstances where double carb is okay, but the bread pasta combination in this circumstance seems to just unsettle me. For some reason, I can't really put a word to. Then our last exclusive sandwich is the club sandwich. You guys do have a club sandwich in the US, but I believe it has avocado, whereas ours does not. We have a bunch of exclusive sandwich options in the US. I mean, the website splits them into classic breakfast options and meats and handheld options. All right, we'll start with the breakfast one, the Miami Spice. It's the same thing, except it's got jalapenos in it. Look at that. This, this thing is just dripping with butter. <laughs> and then we have the rest, which I don't think are supposed to be eaten for breakfast. They do have a brisket BQ melt and a brisket all melt which is not able to get to today. But what we do have is the Cali Club Sandwich. We also got the Super Bird. What? Why is this like turkey, bacon, and tomato and cheese? Yeah, bro. The Big Dipper Melt, which is just a, what looks to be a patty melt with about half a gallon of au jus. Look at that. I love a good patty melt. That's a pretty good one. Next up is this monstrosity, the fried cheese melt. Now, when I heard that and put in for the order, I was assuming it was gonna be like, kind of like a waste of like grilled cheese, like they fried cheese or just, it's just a, a funny way of saying grilled cheese. No, no, no. This is actually a sandwich that consists of mozzarella sticks. Look at this, are you kidding me? Look at this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the top of one of these. I mean, look at this. And it even comes with marinara sauce, yeah. It even says in the script that Harry wrote, mozzarella stick sandwich, you've gotta be kidding me. We are not kidding you, apparently. We have one. That's the stupidest thing I've ever eaten. Other sandwiches you can get that I did not get include the Nashville hot chicken melt, the BLT, and the crispy chicken bacon ranch sandwich. In one of the boxes when we were unpacking everything, I just found three chicken tenders. I was a bit confused because we didn't order any chicken tenders. I ate them because I was hungry. Uh, and now looking back, I realized that that was part of one of our main options, which is chicken and waffles. You get a portion of plain waffles and three chicken tenders and some maple syrup. Combine them all, chicken and waffles. But unfortunately, already gone. Sorry guys. Moving on, we have the barbecue bacon burger. It's a single cheeseburger with two large rashers of bacon. 
For the vegetarians, UK Denny's also has a veggie burger. Veggie burgers just always look a bit sad, don't they? Also, where's the sauce, guys? Come on, this is dry as a bone. It smells almost like falafel or maybe like a vegetable samosa. And our last sandwich option is a chicken burger. General note here, Denny's, uh, please sauce your burgers. These are all quite dry. But here we have two chicken tenders with a slice of cheddar cheese in a bun. This looks like a spaceship. Is there a, a Star Wars spaceship that's shaped like this? That shape really like, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Then for the health conscious among us, we have two salad options, starting with the crispy chicken salad and a grilled chicken salad. In the US, we also have a ton of main course options you won't find in the UK. Didn't get all of them. I will start with the burgers. In the US, we have bacon avocado burger. There's also the before shown slam burger. That's all the grand slam breakfast in burger form. It's so weird, yet it exists. Let's get a little egg hanging out here. And the flame and five pepper burger. There's also a bourbon bacon burger that was not available at the time of filming. We also have bowls, bowls, bowls. So many bowls to choose from, I only got one. That's the Mama D's Pot Roast. I'm assuming the D stands for Denny's, or delicious, or deadly. There's also the crazy spicy bowl and the bourbon chicken bowl. Entrees, you saw a lot of this in the breakfast section, so I don't have to waste too much time on it. First thing we got here is the plate licking fried chicken. And this one, I got a side of mashed potatoes and a little veggie medley. The next thing we got here is the sirloin steak. Who told you to smother this in onions and uh, mushrooms? And there's a hockey puck. Other side you can get, fries and a veggie medley. T-bone steak, you've seen it, with corn and vegetables. That's right here. Country fried steak dinner. Two country fried steaks smothered in white sausage gravy. And of course comes with corn and I think that's mashed potatoes. And you can also get a wild Alaskan salmon. I'm not bringing cooked fish into the studio. Not happening, all right? Use your imagination. And uh, you can also get a Cobb salad. Didn't get that either, because it's a salad. What about the exclusive starters and sides? Well, in the UK, it's kind of like a beige buffet. Here we have chicken poppers. Just bite-sized pieces of fried chicken. This food is so dry, I'm having to skip ahead to the exclusives, which, thankfully for me, includes beer. Three of our UK exclusive sides are actually forms of fries. Here we have cheesy fries. Chips and cheese is a classic British dish. So I'm glad that they uh, have localized their menu to the UK. Then in addition to the cheesy fries, you can add bacon to create cheesy bacon fries. And on top of that, you can add jalapenos to create loaded fries. This is like a Pokemon evolving in its three stages. Cheese fries evolves into bacon cheesy fries, evolves into loaded fries. It's the Charizard of fries. Then our last side dish is a British classic. It's everyone's favorite, baked beans. There they are. These do smell like British baked beans, so kind of like tomato based rather than barbecue. I don't have a spoon. Should I just sip from this like a little shot glass? They're beans. They're beans. What's that meant to go with on this menu? What, menu? what wouldn't this go with on the menu is my question. Waffles, probably. Uh, I reckon a bean pancake could work. You tempted fate here. <laughs> no, that's bad. <laughs> I can't even pretend that's good. Danny says boneless wings. This is what they look like. I don't know what sauces they have for dipping. Nobody asked. Other exclusive sides in the US. You saw all the ones from earlier. These are ones that you've probably seen before. Biscuits and gravy. Scones and gravy. An English muffin. Ironically, not in England. That's weird. We also have right here is whole grain rice. Other sides that we have either mixed within dishes you've seen or not seen at all, wavy cut French fries, season cut French fries, red rustic mashed potatoes, I saw those somewhere, the fresh vegetable medley, and the soup of the day, which is, from what I remember, beef vegetable, and they told us couldn't get it till after 11, and we picked up the food at 10.45.
Now we're onto the desserts. Starting at the back here with chocolate fudge cake with what at one point was whipped cream. Then we have a few cheesecake options, starting with a Reese's cheesecake. Doesn't look very appealing. They've just kind of dumped what I assume is this kind of like peanut buttery, caramelly stuff on top of it. That's not bad. Moving on from Reese's, we have an Oreo cheesecake. So the same cheesecake, but with Oreo pieces crumbled on top. And finally, a Nutella cheesecake. One has fallen on its side, so therefore I can prop it up like a TV. Then we have some French toast options. I'm not sure why Denny's classifies these as desserts, but apparently chocolatey pancakes are a breakfast food. We'll start back here with Oreo French toast. French toast, not much of a thing here in the UK. What we have is eggy bread, which is like, you know, the similar start where you take the bread, dunk it in egg and fry it but then we'll kind of have it as a savory dish rather than as a breakfast slash dessert. Then we have a banoffee French toast. For the uninitiated, banoffee is banana and toffee amalgamated together. Then we have strawberry dream French toast. Fresh strawberries and some vanilla -y icing. Here's three exclusives you can only get in the US and not the UK. New York style cheesecake. Whoa, hey, I'm walking here. The lava cookie skillet. I'm assuming that's this. I can't even break. And it comes with ice cream sure, for like dipping. Yeah, pretty good. And the double chocolate pancake puppies. Like hush puppies, but pancake? Mm, eh. Then we have a couple more dessert options and some milkshakes. Here we have a strawberry ice cream sundae and a caramel ice cream sundae. Ignore the straw. I definitely did not think it was a milkshake. I think we have identified all the shakes. Uh, I believe this is millionaire shortbread, peanut butter shake, a white chocolate and strawberry shake, cookie shake, a vegan vanilla shake, then this I think is Bueno, and this is Nutella. I think my favorite would probably be the millionaire shortbread one. It's very sweet, but very tasty. And after all that, the final exclusive, alcohol, thank God. We can get a few beer and other alcohol options here in the UK, including this Coors Light. I think there's a Peroni beer and some Copperberg fruity cider. Cheers guys. According to Denny's.com, a website I now have an account with, the nearest Denny's to this studio in Burbank, California, an All-American Slam will run you $15.29. An All-American Slam from a UK Denny's costs £10.99, which at the time of recording this was $13.23. That makes the American version 15% more expensive than the UK's. But there's better value to be found elsewhere on the US menu. A stack of pancakes. These very pancakes. Wow, is this right? Two of these cost $3.49? Bro, that is cheap. Two pancakes in the UK, that'll cost you £5.79, which is around $6.97. That means that the UK pancakes are 99% more expensive. I don't consider Denny's fast food. I consider more of a restaurant chain like TGI Fridays. Even though Denny's does really lean into breakfast, it is 24 hours. So Denny's for me was always a place that you can go at any time. Just pretty much anything you would find in a diner, you'll find at a Denny's. I used to go there a lot in high school because you could smoke in a Denny's. And it's open 24 hours. So we just drink coffee, smoke cigarettes, split an appetizer and drive our waitress crazy. Harry wants to know what time of day are you going to a Denny's? I think it's more like what time of your life are you going to Denny's? To me, I could be wrong, but the only people I see at Denny's are teenagers who want to get out of the house and hang out and they can't get into a bar yet and retired people who want to have a $4 breakfast. So once you come into this world on your own, you start by going to Denny's with your friends then you go off, you live a life, you have a family, a career, you make an impact in the world. And once you retire, back to the same Denny's. <laughs> Full circle. I like the standalone diner from the 50s, has some name like Bertha's or Ethel's or Fred's and you have as much coffee as you want, right? And a patty melt, fries. Yeah, that to me, this, the chain is like, no, I like, this, I like the standalone place. For me, I have to say this is quite expensive for what it is. We don't really have a diner culture in the UK, but what we do have is CAFs. CAFs, or short for cafe, are just kind of like a ubiquitous British thing. You'll find a couple of CAFs in every town where you can just get a really cheap and cheerful meal on the go in a hurry, and it'll really, really sort you out, generally for a lot less money than what this will run you. Between CAFs and greasy spoons, which are similar but not quite the same, we really have kind of breakfast culture covered in that regard. That's where you're gonna get your full English, your toast, your kind of 
terrible cup of tea, but in like quite a nice way. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure Denny's would really be bringing too much to the table. When I say we don't really have much of a diner culture in the UK, I guess that's evidenced by the fact that chains like Denny's really haven't taken off over here. We had to actually travel to Wales, to Swansea, to get this one because that's where our only Denny's in the whole UK is. I gotta say it was kind of popular when we were there. It was pretty busy, lots of families taking their kids out for some food. I think maybe Denny's currently is just more of a gimmicky American style thing in the UK. If they did try to roll out, I'm not sure that it would be really kind of filling a void that we have that isn't already filled by calf's greasy spoons or something else. Unfortunately, Denny's in the UK doesn't disclose any of its nutritional information. Denny's in the US does, however, so let's take a look at some menu classics. One thing to note, especially with the slams, is that customizing your order can drastically change the calories. For example, take this all-American slam. If you choose turkey bacon as your meat, hash brown as your potato, and white toast as your bread, it comes out to 1,050 calories. Respectable. On the flip side, you can get the all-American slam with sausage links, french fries, french fries, come on, and then upgrade your toast in order of cinnamon roll pancakes. That doubles the calories of the meal, taking it to 2,300. It's 115% of your daily recommended intake. And the main culprit here, if it wasn't obvious, the cinnamon roll pancakes. Just two of these contain 1,100 calories. A nutritional information document from Denny's dated back in 2020 also suggested that two cinnamon roll pancakes with cream cheese icing contains 157 grams of sugar. That's 254% of your daily allowance. Zoom in for effect. Cool. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Kit Kat in the US and the UK. This is Food Wars. In the US, our Kit Kats come in nine sizes. Yes, really. Down here, we got the smallest, the minis unwrapped. Then we go up to the thins. After that, miniatures. Uh, right here we got the snack size. Then the classic, standard four finger Kit Kat. And the big cat. The big cat king size. The king size. And the XL. In the UK, classic Kit Kat comes in three sizes. As these adorable little bites. As a two finger Kit Kat. Or as a four finger Kit Kat. In the US, our Kit Kat sizes come in an obnoxious varieties of units and weights. Too many to show you today. See? But let's take a look at some of the biggest two and four finger portion sizes you can get. In the UK, the biggest size of the two finger Kit Kats is this 21 pack. All of these add up to around 435 grams of Kit Kat. It's half a kilo. The biggest pack size for the four finger Kit Kats is a 24 pack, totaling 996 grams of Kit Kat, basically a kilogram. Although unfortunately, I couldn't find that today. The UK will be stunned to learn the two finger size is not native to the US. The closest thing we have is our snack size, which is 7.75 grams smaller. However, that being said, in the US, you can get a snack size bulk bag of 66 pieces, which is 916 grams. And then there's the four finger size, which comes in a 36 pack and is 1,512 grams. Kit Kat, I have a bone to pick with you. What is with the packaging? of these new Kit Kats. These two finger ones had such iconic packaging in the UK. It was wrapped in foil and then had this band of paper going around the outside. And now they've replaced it with plastic. Bring back the old packaging. A four finger Kit Kat in the UK will cost you 70p, which is around 87 cents in the US. In the US, one of these costs $1.49 or one pound 20. That's a 71% cost increase in the US. 71% more expensive in the US. That's quite rare, particularly when it comes to snacks. I feel like in the UK, we tend to get stung for snacks, uh, even more so than like fast food. So, hey, we're doing something right. Imagine if prices of these went up by 50p in the UK, there would be riots. Yeah, the streets would be burning. Here are all the Kit Kat exclusives you can get in the US, you can't get in the UK, unless, of course, your grocery store has an American section. Here are all the UK Kit Kats you can't get in the US unless you have access to the internet. Just about every portion size that we have, save for the four finger version, the UK does not have. Get a closer look, the minis, the unwrap. And I wanna act like this is for sharing, but like once your hand goes in there, it's yours, right? Also with the minis, they look a lot like your UK bites from the outside. Now from what I can tell, the inside of one of these still kind of looks like a Kit Kat. Yours look like Almost like a crunch bar, does that make sense? Let's cut to Harry where he's just bitten inside of a bite and tell us how it looks inside. Harry. 
Yeah. I don't know how much of this you can see, but you're not getting like the distinct wafer layers that you're used to from a Kit Kat. It's pretty much just like solid chocolate with little pieces of a uh, biscuity wafer in there and stuff. I'm not quite sure what the point of the thins are because a smaller one has less calories, but if you have a whole bag of them, you're just gonna eat the whole bag, right? Oh God, the hazelnut. That's not nearly as good as regular Kit Kat. Then we're on to my personal favorite range, which is Kit Kat Chunkies. Firstly, you can get a standard Kit Kat Chunky, but in a duo pack. This is just a standard unflavored Kit Kat Chunky, but in a two pack. Although they're not like full size chunky bars, there's like kind of two, I guess maybe two third chunky bars. So it's still bigger than a standard one, but not like an official double. Now, this next size we got is the Big Cat. And I know what all you Kit Kat heads are saying in the UK right now. It's not the chunky. Your chunky is 40 grams. This one is 42 grams. And it says right here on the package, five crispy wafers. And Yuli, if you can get a close up on that, uh, that pic there, that is in fact five crispy wafers. I'm looking at the pick of yours online. Y'all got four, we got five. Big, chunky, get out of here. Firstly, why do you guys call these big cats? Because chunky is a way better name. It's much more fun. Just call them Kit Kat Chunky. And then our biggest size, the XL, which from what I can tell is three Kit Kats. It's 12 pieces. Put the price of a Kit Kat on screen, then put the price of the XL on screen. Is it exactly three times? Maybe sending one of these to the ocean is better than sending three smaller ones. I really don't know. Then we're on to some of the exclusive Kit Kat flavors you can find only in the UK. We'll start with this one, which is a vegan Kit Kat. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I don't need just clock notes. Vegan Kit Kat. And then right at the top, there's a little warning label that says, may contain milk. You had one job, guys. I think I should do a blind taste test. Charlie has confirmed that they do look different. So my eyes are staying closed. Thank you, Charlie. This one feels very like smooth. I mean, I'm already pretty sure that's the vegan one. I'm confident this is the regular one, but this isn't bad. Sometimes when you have a vegan option, it's like actively bad. This one isn't offensive by any means. Was I correct? Yes. I was correct, cool. <laughs> so we have four flavor options in the UK, which I believe you will not find in the US. We have a white chocolate Kit Kat. That's fine. I'm not the biggest white chocolate guy. An orange chocolate Kit Kat. See, I'm not normally a big orange chocolate fan either, but that's not bad. It's like quite a subtle orange flavor, not too in your face. And here we have the caramel Kit Kat, which I think is new. It's pretty good. I get more like honeycomb than caramel from this. Definitely sweeter than the standard Kit Kat. And a dark chocolate Kit Kat. I don't normally go for dark chocolate, but I will eat it sometimes. And that's not particularly good dark chocolate. Four flavors that I have seen before that currently don't seem available anywhere online. Couldn't get my hands on them. Apple pie Kit Kat, the lemon crisp Kit Kat, the key lime Kit Kat, which is very good. And of course, the birthday cake Kit Kat. But what I could get my hand on are the Kit Kat duos, which are different chocolate flavors on the top and the bottom. Okay, mint and dark chocolate. Oh yeah, look at that. See, look at that. Yeah, like a thin mint. It's pretty good. Mocha and chocolate, mocha and chocolate. What's the difference between mocha and chocolate? I'm supposed to have coffee. Oh, last and not least, strawberry and dark chocolate. Oh look, it's kind of like my color palette. Mmm, this is the best one. This is the best one. The next exclusive flavor is the Kit Kat Chunky Peanut Butter. These are incredible. These are one of my favorite chocolate bars, I would say, in the UK. The king of chocolate bars. Can we get a little crown on the Kit Kat Chunky Peanut Butter, please? Thank you. The next exclusive Chunky flavor is the Caramel. We also have this in the standard Kit Kat version, but let's give the Chunky one a try real quick. Ooh. This is very different to the Two Finger Kit Kat. This one has an actual layer of caramel in it, which is kind of what I was expecting from these ones. But this one's good. Next up, we have the Kit Kat Chunky White Chocolate. And while I couldn't find the individual bars today, you can also get a Lotus Biscoff Kit Kat Chunky. I was able to find this in the form of bites. So I'll give one of these a try and uh, give my thoughts on the flavor. I think because you get the balance of the chocolate, 
and a little bit of biscuit in with the Biscoff flavoring, it's not that bad, it's not overwhelming. Is it enough to convince me to start liking Biscoff? Probably not, but not bad. Also you can get Kit Kat sundae cones and Kit Kat ice cream. We have no freezer, I didn't want it melting in the studio. We actually do have Kit Kat ice cream in the UK. I was able to find some in a food warehouse by Iceland. However, I didn't buy them because I wasn't going somewhere with a freezer afterwards, so it would have been melty and a bit of a disaster. Here's what they do look like if you do find them in the UK. In the UK, Kit Kat offers a range of seasonal products depending on which season you're in. We're filming this in April, so we've just had Easter and they had these adorable little Kit Kat bunnies on offer. These came either as a single one or as a little multi-pack. Slightly worryingly, I was able to find a Christmas Kit Kat in one of the uh, corner shops that I visited. <laughs> which, apparently these are fine until September this year, so we're fine. That's quite cute actually. <laughs> it's quite a nice little design. The final exclusive I was able to track down is a fun one. It's Kit Kat breakfast cereal. As the packaging suggests, it's new. I don't think it's in every supermarket or shop yet. I had to go to a Waitrose to find this. They look like uh, little tiny cereal pillows. I know this is not the fairest and most accurate way to test cereal, but they're pretty, they're, they're pretty good. I was actually able to find two of your US exclusives, Joe. I have the Kit Kat birthday cake and the Duo's mocha and white chocolate. As many Brits will know, our high streets are plagued by American candy stores, which are these bizarre shops which import American snacks and chocolates and play really loud music. And I'm pretty sure are a front for something or other. But I was finally able to benefit from them by buying these. This does have all of those uh, lovely forbidden food colorings that we don't usually get in the UK. So if I'm really hyperactive after this, we'll know why. That is colorful. Yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. <clears throat> you guys don't hold back on the sugar, do you? Yeah, that's, that's excessive. That's too much, guys. Chill out. After the birthday cake, I'm hoping for something slightly more savory. Pretty strong coffee flavor. Yeah, this one's fine. I like this. A US Kit Kat bar is 210 calories. It's 11 grams of fat, seven grams of saturated fat, 20 milligrams of sodium, 28 grams of carbs, 23 grams of sugar, and two grams of protein. In the UK, a standard Kit Kat bar contains the following. 209 calories, 10.2 grams of fat, of which 5.6 grams are saturated, 40 milligrams of sodium, 26.1 grams of carbs, of which 21.3 grams are sugars, and 2.8 grams of protein. That's less in every category other than protein and sodium, where for some reason we have double the US figure. Our most calorific Kit Kat is the Kit Kat XL. It contains a total of 640 calories. In the UK, our most calorific item is a peanut butter Kit Kat Chunky. One of these contains 226 calories, which is still less than half of the US Kit Kat XL. While Kit Kats are now beloved all around the world, they were invented in the UK. The first modern Kit Kat bar was created by the Roundtree Company back in 1935, although then it was called a chocolate crisp. It wasn't until 1937 that they first used the name Kit Kat, renaming it to the Kit Kat Chocolate Crisp. The bar exploded in popularity, so much so that it even survived rationing during the Second World War. Despite milk shortages, rather than halting production completely, the Roundtrees changed the recipe to use plain chocolate instead. So as not to confuse customers with the new taste, they changed the packaging to a blue wartime color. After the war, when rationing was lifted and normal production resumed, they adopted the iconic red color that we know and love today. The popularity of Kit Kat continued to grow and they were exported all over the world. In the 1970s, Roundtree gave Hershey a license to manufacture and distribute Kit Kats in the US. This agreement remained in place even after Nestle acquired Roundtree in 1988. The popularity of Kit Kat has actually turned out to be something of a double-edged sword for Hershey. As part of their deal with Roundtree, if the company is ever sold, they lose their license to manufacture and produce Kit Kat. Kit Kat is the single most popular product sold by Hershey in the US, so it makes it much harder to sell the company should they ever want to. My kingdom for a Kit Kat. In the US, a Kit Kat is made up of sugar, wheat flour, cocoa butter, non-fat milk, chocolate, refined palm kernel oil, lactose milk, milk fat, and contains 2% or less of soy lecithin, PGPR, which is an emulsifier, yeast, artificial flavor, salt, and sodium bicarbonates. A UK Kit Kat has the following ingredients. Sugar, wheat flour, which contains calcium, iron, thiamine, and niacin, milk powders, whole and skimmed, cocoa mass, cocoa butter, vegetable fats, lactose and proteins from whey, whey powder, emulsifier sunflower lecithin, yeast, 
raising agent sodium bicarbonate, butter fat, and natural flavorings. If you've seen the Snickers episode, you might remember that in the UK, we tend to feel our chocolate is of a higher quality than that found in the US. It's generally a bit richer and a bit smoother. The reason for this is a higher cocoa and fat content found in our chocolate. According to UK rules, chocolate must contain no less than 25% cocoa solids to be considered milk chocolate. The milk used in each country's Kit Kat production also differs slightly. In the UK, Nestle uses milk crumb, which is a dehydrated, slightly sweetened milk product. In the US, Hershey uses non-fat milk and milk fat. And in the US, the rules are our milk chocolate must contain no less than 10% of chocolate liqueur, which is roughly equal part mix of coca salads and coca butter. Unlike most US chocolates, like Snickers for instance, our Kit Kats do contain sugar and not high fructose corn syrup. Really? Yeah. It's worth pointing out that in the UK, Kit Kats are made by Nestle, while in the US, they're made by Hershey. Furthermore, in 2015, Hershey did a deal with Let's Buy British Imports to stop importing all Cadbury's chocolate made overseas, and in the same deal, agreed to halt imports of so many British chocolates like Kit Kat. Also, and this can be for another episode, the license agreement allows Hershey to make, for example, Cadbury chocolate in the US with the same packaging as in the UK, but with a different recipe. Ooh. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Costco food in the US and the UK. This is Food Wars. Here is an iconic Costco hot dog in the UK. Ah yes, the famous Costco hot dog. In the UK, the length of a hot dog is eight inches. Don't laugh. <laughs> eight inches. Almost exactly eight inch dog. It's also advertised as a quarter pounder hot dog. Let's see if that's true. So with the bun and some onions, the whole thing weighs 250 grams. I'm gonna take the sausage out and weigh that on its own to see if that is a quarter pounder. Turns out that without the bun and the toppings, it does weigh exactly a quarter of a pound. That's pretty impressive. I know it's like manufactured and mass made by machines, but you know, still cool. Oh my God. It's exactly four ounces. Wow. They kept it a quarter pound after it's cooked and everything. See, Costco, it's not impossible. All these people watch this and they're like, mm, it's a quarter of a pound before you cook it. Well, they said four ounces, whatever they're doing, after it's cooked, it is the advertised four ounces. Way to go, Costco. In the UK, a Costco pizza is 17 inches in diameter. That makes the surface area 227 square inches. In the US, our Costco pizza should also be 18 inches in diameter. Let's measure it. More like 17 and a half, Costco. It's still $9.99. That's a ridiculous deal. You can keep that half an inch. Our pizza today was cut into six pieces. I'd say for a pizza of this size, it's kind of uncommon to see only six slices. I would expect maybe eight or 10, like a Domino's, but we're gonna weigh one slice and find out how big it is. Now let's weigh one slice. That is a dense slice of pizza. There's some citation needed, but this might be the heaviest slice of pizza we've ever weighed on Food Wars. <laughs> That's a big layer of cheese. Not a ton of tomato sauce. I would say it's like maybe 70% bread. So I don't know if you're getting a ton of value for money when it comes to toppings. I quite like it. <laughs> it's got that nostalgic, cheap frozen pizza quality. The chicken bake. I don't know what the origin of this is, but it's a pretty good idea. It's just like a giant chicken hot pocket, right? The guy holding up the fish that he's just caught. We've already used this gag in a recent episode, but we can reuse it. I am curious. Oh, why is this so good? This is so good. I will say, I love stodgy food. So I feel like I am the target audience for all of these foods. The fountain drinks in the UK come in one size and it's supposedly 22 fluid ounces. Of course, we have to check it. So in what seems to be an increasingly rare occurrence on Food Wars, that is actually as much drink as we were promised. That's 22 ounces. But the fountain drinks in the US are 20 fluid ounces. Look at that, it's exactly 20 ounces and I filled it up at the thing. Man, Costco is like razor sharp with the portions, right? They're not leaving anything to chance. Thank you, Costco. Here are all the Costco menu items in the UK that you won't find in the US. Here are all the Costco menu items in the US you won't find in the UK. 
Quick disclaimer that the menus seem to vary slightly depending on where you are in the UK or the US. I got these from the Chingford location just outside of London, and Joe's got his from the Burbank location in California. We have one exclusive pizza option in the UK from Costco, and it's this one, the barbecue chicken pizza. As the name suggests, it's a barbecue chicken pizza which also comes with some green bell peppers and some red onion. When I see a barbecue pizza in the UK, I usually grimace because it tends to mean that the sauce is barbecue, and I don't like that. But I think here, they've actually just kept the same like cheese and tomato base but added the barbecue toppings on top, which in my opinion is what a barbecue pizza should be. <laughs> Leon does not agree. It still feels pretty hefty. Maybe not quite as dense or as hefty as the cheese pizza did. The dough seems to be not quite as thick. Try just a chicken on its own first. It's not bad, I'm not getting much barbecue flavor from that. It's more just like a sort of grilled chicken. Usually my biggest complaint of barbecue pizzas is that they're too barbecuey, whereas this one actually isn't very barbecuey at all. That means that I like it, but if you do normally like quite a strong barbecue sauce flavor from your pizzas, this one might not be enough for you. In the UK, you can also get whole pizzas as part of a family bundle. The bundles come with a full-size pizza, one of these gigantic garlic breads, two of these garlic and herb dips, and also a two liter bottle of Pepsi Max, half of which I have spilled on the floor of the studio. Twisted churro. We got these, you guys don't. That's not a lot of stuff. All right, this thing, churro, cinnamon, dough, Mmm. Next up, we've got Costco's take on a classic British dish, cottage pie. Now, our American viewers may have heard of shepherd's pie. Cottage pie is basically the same thing in that it's a layer of some cheese on top, usually, some mashed potato, but instead of the lamb mince mixture, cottage pie contains beef mince. Now, this is a classic British dish, and we do feel pretty passionately about things like this, so let's hope Costco have done it justice. The strategy seems to be sell large quantities of food, but really pack it with the kind of cheap stuff. So for example, there's like a small amount of cheese on top here, a very small amount of beef on the bottom, and I'd say like 80% of this is just, it's just mashed potato. Let's give it a try. It's actually quite tasty. You work for Costco. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I look, I don't work for Costco. I just, I'm a truth seeker. So again, the beef is like, it's very rich quite thick, but there's a real like meaty flavor to that. Is it the best cottage pie you ever had? No, probably not. But is it like an affordable filling version that's fairly true to, to the original? I'd have to kind of say, yeah. You do get kind of more filling as you go into the middle as well. It wasn't all like that, thankfully. Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't think they've done too bad a job here. Next up, we have this one, which is the double chicken fillet sandwich. Considering the theme of just like hefty foods, <laughs> This thing is absolutely massive. <laughs> Look at it. Yeah, I think maybe they were supposed to stack the chicken patties instead of lay them side by side because the bun barely covers any of it. They've also only put one slice of cheese on it. So only about 40% of it is covered in cheese. I might have to do some quick uh, tactical rearrangement here. Oh, oh, there's maybe, oh, there's another bit of cheese on the bottom. So you get cheese. God, but then it's like, can you eat this? Because that is also a logistical nightmare to eat. I think whichever way you stack this, it's gonna be quite tricky to eat. But this is the double chicken fillet sandwich. There are two chicken fillets, two slices of cheese, some lettuce, and some tomato. Extremely dry, very bland. <laughs> like None of the components taste of anything somehow. It's a bit of a miss. Again, it's like, it's big. It would fill you up. <laughs> Next up, we have the Korean barbecue beef bake. So it's like the chicken bacon that it's kind of a baguette with some cheese on top filled with meat. But instead of chicken and bacon, this one has Korean barbecue beef. I imagine it's gonna be a similar level of stodginess to the chicken bake and also to everything else that we've eaten today. The filling on its own doesn't really taste of much, which is slightly disappointing. That's bland, that's disappointing. I'm still eating it, <laughs> but it's bland. It's just like nothing that jumps out to me as like, you know, Korean flavors in this. If you're gonna make something that bland, I think don't drag Korea through the mud, just call it a beef bake and be done with it. There's one other classic British dish on the UK Costco menu, which unfortunately they forgot to give me today, and it's jacket potatoes. There's a note in the script where Joe says that he doesn't know what a jacket potato is, so I'll do my best to just explain it to you now. As the name suggests, it's basically just a potato that you keep in your jacket in case you get hungry. These can either be boiled or baked. You'll usually wrap it in some foil just so that it doesn't kind of touch anything else that's in your pockets, keep it on you, and then whenever you get hungry during the day, you have a nice snack with you. As the name suggests, it's basically a potato that you keep in your jacket. 
We also have two exclusive dessert style options in the UK, including a caramel fudge sundae and a coffee caramel frappe. I didn't get either of them today, but here's what they look like. Ahem. Two cold drinks you get here in the US Costco is the fruit smoothie. Oh my God, that's great. Mmm. Well, that's really good. And the cold brew mocha freeze. Uh, oh boy, has melted. I'm, like, I'm, I'm really surprised how good these cold drinks are. I mean, their food is good, but these are really good. Mmm. Yeah, that's picking me up. That's picking me up, Yules. Let's go. Ah, now I need to calm down a little bit. And finally in the UK, we also have mango smoothies on the menu. Although today their machine was broken, they weren't serving them. Here's what they look like. I want to take this moment to talk about Kirkland, Costco's signature brand that provides a wide variety of products for a low cost. Over the years, the brand has developed a loyal fan base among Costco members. It would be impossible to feature all of the Kirkland food and beverage items exclusive to the US, not in the UK. And believe me, I begged management to let me sample Kirkland's many alcohol options, to which they said, no way. So here are a few non-alcohol Kirkland Signature favorite exclusives in the US. I'm gonna start here, animal crackers. I mean, come on, UK. Who doesn't love animal crackers? Are animal crackers popular in the United Kingdom? Oh my God, let's do the, let's do the animal review. I think monkey, uh, gorilla, orangutan. This looks like a hippo. We got hippo. Oh, this is most certainly a koala. Oh, that, I've seen that guy already. We're already getting repeats. Alligator, I think, possibly a dragon. Oh, Brookfield Zoo, all on your fingertips here in cracker form, fantastic. In the US is not playing with their cheese selection. So many, and the one according to the internet that just everyone is raving about is of course the Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano. One and a half pounds, how much do you think a one and a half pound block of Parmigiano Reggiano costs? Go. What do you think? Actually, it was $16. Jeez, both of you. I thought we were like, it was, it was like everyone's gonna be like, $50. No, 16. That's still really good. 16 bucks for all this? I mean, this is gonna last, man. This will last many of your uh, wine and cheese parties. Uh, and of course, Costco has a fantastic selection of wine, all of which I'm not allowed to go near, apparently, according to management. All right. I mean, this video a lot more entertaining. We were doing the wine review. <laughs> peanut butter, peanut butter, peanut butter. When I went to the UK, I'm not kidding you. Every person I talked to, when they realized I was an American, which was literally one second after I opened my mouth, they all asked me the same thing. What is with Americans and peanut butter? Is peanut butter not popular in the UK? They were like, you guys, you guys put peanut butter in everything. We kind of do. This is really good peanut butter. Please forgive me all the peanut butter heads watching. Do you want it? This liquidy, because I'm thinking peanut butter sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and honey, whatever you're mixing the peanut butter with, right? You want some thickness to it to stay on the bread. Do we want thin peanut butter? I don't know, I'm asking you, the viewer. What is the preferred viscosity of peanut butter? I mean, this is creamy, but I mean like cream creamy. Italian sparkling mineral water with carbonation added. If anyone was wondering, just how boring I am. My favorite sparkling water is actually the non-flavored, right? Like LaCroix, my favorite one's the, the plain. Yeah, that's right, you better, Ugg. I just like, I like the bubbles in the water. Mmm. Smells Italian. Oh yeah, it's like really harsh. This is very good. Mm-hmm. Like you want that harshness of the bubbles. What are you illing about? Speaking of Italy, pesto. So the basil was imported, but I don't think this was made in Italy. Basil, people swear by this stuff. They swear by it. Dried mango slices. This right here, look how many of these they gave me, man. This is two and a half pounds of dried organic mango slices. I am a mango boy. That's an impressive list of stuff. We don't have that many Kirkland exclusives in the UK, but there is one interesting one I found, which is this hazelnut spread. This is just Costco's version of Nutella, not Nutella. 
Well, that was interesting because I was looking at the ingredients of this and the percentages kind of piqued my interest. So out of interest, we Googled what the contents of real Nutella are and the ingredients said that there were 13% real hazelnuts in there as well as 7.4% fat reduced cocoa powder. So if we compare it to this one, Leon, how much do you think, how much hazelnut do you think is in this? 13%. Exactly the same. Fat reduced cocoa powder, 7.4%. So on paper, this has basically identical ingredients to real Nutella. I mean, it smells and looks a lot like Nutella. I would struggle to tell this apart from real Nutella in a blind taste test, and it is cheaper. So hey, next time you're around and you really, really love Nutella, you can buy it in bulk here and you won't really know. I also found some products which weren't Kirkland brand but did pique my interest. Marmite. I found this kind of catering sized tub of Marmite which I could not resist. I assume this is an exclusive and not something that you'd find in the US, not 100% sure. I made Marmite pasta and put it on Instagram yesterday and people got upset, so it felt relevant. Then I also found some American products at Costco that you wouldn't normally see on British shelves. For example, Skippy brand peanut butter. This isn't bad, but like, there's so much oil in here. You can see it's like running off the top and it's kind of made the whole thing go very liquidy. According to the ingredients, this is 10% hydrogenated palm oil which might go some way to explaining why it's so liquidy at room temperature. These caught my eye while I was browsing the shelves. Smucker's Goober? Neither of those are real words, first of all. But this is peanut butter and grape jelly stripes. Is this what Americans are putting in PB&Js? It claims to be America's favorite combination peanut butter and jelly. How much competition do they have in this field? I'd love to know. Americans love grape flavor things and it's really not common in the UK for whatever reason. I mean, it's quite pretty. I'd love to see the machine that puts this into the jar in that pattern. This is a lot more solid. I think they've added like gelling agents and stuff to this to keep it in that uniform shape with the cool color pattern. The grape jelly is extremely sweet and the peanut butter, even I think on its own is quite sweet compared to the Skippy as well. I want to give a disclaimer, although this is the exclusive sections, I don't think these are exclusive. I just know that one awesome thing about the Costco here in the US, I don't know if it's in the UK, Harry can confirm this, is they have ridiculously good baked goods. Costco's in the US is also famous for having a sheet cake. Couldn't get it, you gotta order it ahead of time. I'm sorry, let's get a picture of that on the screen with my face on it. But they have so many muffins and croissants and other things. I heard really good things about the bakery section at Costco, so I also had to give that a try. This goes out to Katia's dad, our producer Katia. Apparently her dad really loves Costco croissant. I feel like these would benefit significantly from being heated up. It's not bad, as far as like pre-packaged croissants go. And finally, these cookies. You get chocolate chip, double chocolate, and white chocolate chip. In the UK, a lot of our like pre-packaged cookies, for whatever reason, tend to be really solid. And you can like snap them rather than chew them. But this is the much softer American style cookie which is really good. Full disclosure, this is the first time I've ever shopped at a Costco. And that's not a snob thing. See, I grew up, my dad worked for a grocery chain, and then I move out into the world, and the thought of having a case of toilet paper or bottled water in my shoebox apartment was crazy. Also, $60 for a membership? I mean, I was just scraping by, so coming $60 to go grocery shopping was madness for me, so. And then just never, um, never went until now for this video and I think Costco is really awesome. I like it now, shout out to Kirkland. Costco in the UK is a little bit weird because not just anyone can actually walk into a Costco. You have to actually apply for warehouse membership, which is different to just standard online membership. And to do that, you have to be working in a certain number of limited professions. Some of the professions make sense. Uh, it's things like teachers who maybe work in school and need to buy supplies. And some of them are really random. Things like uh, airline workers are allowed in. I think I was technically allowed in as a journalist, so this is journalism if anyone asks. I believe a year of standard individual membership cost around 30 pounds, maybe slightly more. There's different tiers as well. You can get like executive membership where you unlock certain perks. Honestly, I don't really know why it's set up exactly this way in the UK. I guess they wanna kind of have some control over the foot traffic in the stores. They don't want everybody just piling into the store. I went at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday and it was really busy. And I asked someone on the till and they said that that wasn't even busy by their standards. I think this is what it's like in the US, but the shop itself was just basically an enormous warehouse with stuff everywhere. It wasn't organized hugely well. Uh, the aisles weren't particularly 
sort of labeled. There were numbers on the R's, but it didn't say what was in them. So I just kind of had to like snake around and try and find what I could find. Things were slightly cheaper in there than usual, but I don't even think things were like massively discounted, particularly the branded stuff compared to the Kirkland stuff. So I think you're more just going because you need to buy things in bulk and it's slightly more convenient rather than because you're trying to save a lot of money on your day-to-day -day groceries. For me to be able to sign up for this, uh, they needed to see a pay slip so they could prove who I was employed by. Kind of weird. A whole pizza from a UK Costco will cost you £9.99, which at the time of recording was $12.38. A Costco pizza in the US is $9.95, or £8.03. pence. That's a 19.9% price decrease in the US. The Costco hot dog here in the US with a 20 ounce soda is $1.50, the same price it's been since 1985. How has Costco managed to sell them for so low for all these years? In an age where seemingly everything has been hit by inflation, the Costco hot dog has become somewhat of a viral phenomenon. Their commitment to keeping the hot dog combo at $1.50 is so strong that as the story goes, when the current CEO approached the old CEO about possibly raising the price, he said, if you raise the price of the hot dog, I will kill you figure it out. And they did. Costco would soon switch from selling Hebrew national hot dogs in their food courts to manufacturing their own. They opened a hot dog factory in LA, then in Chicago, reducing production costs and keeping the hot dog at the $1.50 price point today. It is fair to point out that our hot dog costs £1.50, which is more like $1.86. It does come with two more ounces of soda, so maybe that's why. Or maybe Costco just likes the aesthetic of having $1.50 on the sign. A slice of pepperoni pizza from a UK Costco is 826 calories, while a slice of cheese pizza is 751. The most calorific thing on the menu is a whole pepperoni pizza. A whole pepperoni pizza is 4,962 calories, which is 248% of your daily allowance. A slice of pepperoni at Costco in the US is 650 calories. A slice of cheese, roughly the same size, would be 710 calories. That's 60 calories more. Hmm. Does that make sense that the cheese is more calories than the pepperoni? I got it, I got it. Mwah! The UK chicken bake is 911 calories. An entire US chicken bake is 840 calories. A UK hot dog is 602 calories. The hot dog and 20 ounce soda in the US is 582, 850 calories, depending on the drink you get. So least calories would be, of course, Diet Pepsi, which has zero calories. If you got a regular Pepsi, that'd be 250 calories. And if you want to get the most calories in your drink, that, of course, would be 280 extra calories if you got the Tropicana Fruit Punch. I've been asked by my producer to wipe up the crumbs. One thing Little Caesars didn't provide were napkins. That's okay. Let me wipe my mouth real quick. Mm. Mm. This video, ugh, sponsored by Domino's. Ah, Caesar. Et tu, Brute.